Oh, I forgot to put myself on screen. Uh, this heat makes me crazy. That makes me forget things. Oh, and I was also muted on my YouTube site, so that is good. Um, we wait and see and how many will join us. Hey, Sandra, Sandy Robinson, good to see you. It's always nice to see you, miss. How are you doing, Sandra? I hope everything is okay with you. And I hope you have a decent temperature where you are. Well, my week has been pretty warm, hot, and unbearable, but The summertime is not my one of my best times of the year. Summertime and the heat and the sun makes me basically crazy. I can't stand it, but I always feel sick when the, the temperature is going up over 12 degrees Celsius. And the weather makes me my mental health go down at the summertime. And that is because of the heat and the sunlight. And I can barely breathe, which is not that fun. Hey, Idaho Garden Girl, good to see you. And welcome to my stream, my, by the way. It's always nice to have you here, my friend. I put some um, lemon juice in my water. And it's actually really refreshing. And we wait a couple of more minutes and um, before we get into today's topic for today's evening, today's stream, which is fishing nuts. So, well, it's a good topic because I never had a topic about fishing nuts before, so... That will be interesting. I hope everyone had a great week. The time is flying these days. July 10th, I have my vacation so that is nice <laughs> see you are you are really funny uh and why not right yeah exactly see you are you are most welcome idaho garden girl you're most welcome it's a pleasure to help you out and if you're or a rookie uh, and a newbie on uh, live streaming, it, it can be pretty difficult when you're not used to it, but you will get hang of it. The more you do live streams, you get more experience. The hardest part, I think, is Especially if you're alone, uh, uh, 
it is hard to figure out what you are going to say. You can talk for a while and then you run out of words. It happens to me all the time. Well, as a newbie on live streaming, it's a good thing to have some, have a co-hosts that can back you up. That makes everything easier, actually. And it keeps the stream going and running. So, I think you did well, Idaho Garden Girl. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. And I really hope that will be more people who popping in soon. That would be awesome. Um, you are very welcome, Idaho Garden Girl. Uh, that's a newbie on live streaming. You need the encouragement from people you can trust and and help you out on your live streams. That's that that is all, always nice to have a backup as some. It's more like of a support. Um, yes, yeah, CR, I know you find CR in every, almost every word. Ah, three in the house. Awesome. Uh, I wonder who that mysterious third one is. Oh, uh, I for, almost forgot. Uh, I pinned the uh, StreamYard link in the top of the chat. You know the drill. Um, just click the link and join me up here. Because it's, it, would, it is pretty lonely when you're up here alone. Uh, Nice, CR. Nice. Uh, so, those who are up for it, just click the link and join me up here. Feel free to do it. But anyway, Uh, hey, Nitha Nagadasu, all type of videos. Good evening, my friend. How are you doing? I hope your week has been great and a decent temperature where you are. You know, guys, I appreciate every one of you. Uh, now I almost forgot what I was, I was going to do here. Um, let's see if I can find it. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, rem I remember you were from India. Yeah, 
It's good to see you. Um, I think we can begin with this one. Welcome to Fishing Nuts. Uh, I think we can make this a little bit larger. Not too much. Oh, that was a little bit too big, I guess. First of all, when it comes to fishing nuts, there are a lot of different nuts when it comes to fishing. And some of them are for hooks. Some of them are for connecting two different two lines together in, in some kind of certain types of line, you have two different uh, dimensions. Like um, when you fly fishing, that takes different nuts for that type of fishing. Um, but, uh, and this, um, Animated nuts, I put this in the description box as well, uh, so you can check it out for yourself. And what I like with this is um, it is nice and clean, good photographs of um, this not, but they have animated them as well. So, um, this, this one is uh, for fly fishing nuts. You have the backing lane, fly line, and you have a different type of knot there. Um, and you, then you have another one on this end, and then you have another knot here in the tippet, and another knot to tie the fly to the tippet. So you have basically on this one um, A, which is the knot here that. Um, you tie the backing line on your reel. That is an arbor knot. Um, then you tie the fly line to the backing line. That is an Albright knot. Uh, and then you go further. You have a uh, Another knot that is called nail knot. Uh, I'm not really sure what kind of knot that is. Um, I have to check it. Um, and S, you attach. Uh, this is uh, the leading line, leader line. And then you have a tippet. Um, you have a, this knot S is a surgeon's or blood nut, works very well. Uh, it depends on what you prefer, surgeon's or blood nut. And then you have a Davy, Dun Davy Duncan or improved clinch knot to tie your fly um, to it. Uh, 
But the thing here is with the, uh, the animated nut is you have a photo on all the nuts. Um, and you have a, a short description here on what um, the knot is used for. Um, so I go back. Um, so this uh, is to join different types or thickness of fishing line. And the thing here is with animated knots is you can, it's animated uh, so you can see how you tie the knot. And I like, you can learn a lot of things from this site. So you can learn to tie your knot, different types of knots from this site because you can see how they are tied as. So it's really cool actually. Um, and this is the old old bright knot. Um, um, arbor knot. Uh, the description for this one is used to attach the fishing line to the arbor or spool center. Um, this knot. Uh, I haven't used actually at all. Um, I use another type of knot for that, but I guess this one is a lot better. Um, you have a play button and you have um, this little arrow here, so you can just check step by step on how you tie it, which is really awesome. That's why I like this uh, website. So, so the, uh, this is really cool actually. Um, Australian braid knot. Strong loop for double line leader and loop to loop join. Okay. Um, and these are under the category fishing knots. So uh, I have never heard about this one before. So But it seems to be a pretty reliable knot. It's really, it's a really beautiful knot. It could serve as a more like of a decorative knot as well. Um, oh, I also forgot to say you have a. Um, description here um, and it also says have another part of it uses um, and tying it uh, line in pounds uh, braid in inches recommendations Techniques, advantages, breaking strain. So there are a lot of different um, knots that are used for um, fishing. Um, 
this one is uh, Bimini Twist Knot. Um, I'm not familiar with that one. So, uh, okay, so. Uh, Okay, they do tighten it up, okay. That looks like a half hitch, two half hitches. So um, a description on, as well here um, uses uh, the Bimini twist is used to create a strong loop for use as double line leader on the end of a fishing line that can then be used for a loop to loop connection. Uh, well, that is really nice to have it not like that. Um, here is a written description on how to tying it. Uh, and it's also obviously options for this one. Um, the Bimini twist animation shows the knot being tied off with a half hitch followed by a multi-turn hitch. Okay. Um, many fishermen, you do use both. Although they were, are both shown, the half hitch was actually united to allow the animation to be finished with only the multi-turn hitch. This produces a smoother finished knot and is preferred by a growing number of fishermen. Okay. Um, advantages. The strength of being Bimini twist depends on upon the strain being transferred gradually to the knot over a considerable length. It is better known and more widely used than the Australian braid, which has similar properties and may be easier to learn. Yeah. Learn fishing knots that are easy. Some knots is a little bit more difficult to tie. Uh, some most of the time it works with a simple a simple fishing knot so not comp too complicated to um, tie. Um, blood knot is the most famous of knots, yeah. when, especially when it comes to um, joining two lines to get of similar size uh, together. Um, now I have to go to check here if the animation of the knots is great, really helps to understand how to do it and how it works. Yeah, uh, exactly. Um, Hey, Thorhaven, good to see you, brother. Um, I learned the tumble hitch from these, yeah. Many of these can help beyond fishing, yeah. Uh, that is the nicest thing with this uh, fishing knots here. Uh, that is, some of them you can use beyond the, the fishing, um, which is really nice. But blood knot is... Uh, easy knot to tie. Do, just to put a band on it and do some... Uh, do uh, some turns around the cordage and then tuck the end in and you do the same on the other line. Um, so make sure these these two are on the blue on this side and the other one on that side. And the, 
the thing is why they use two different colors on the ropes when they do these animations is it makes it easier for you to see um, and how the knot looks like. Um, it's harder to see if um, it is uh, the same color. So when you're gonna, at a little tips when you're going to learn tying knots overall in general, use different colored cordage. Well, it doesn't matter what, what which color you have. If it's green or pink, it doesn't matter because it makes it easier, especially you can practice um, so you know how it will be done. So that I, I use two different colors when I practice on knots because it's easier to see. When you learn the knot, it doesn't matter. You can use what, which cord, cordage you need or line. So you know how it's how to tie it so you don't need two different colors. So it's for practice purpose. Uh, you have two different colors. Um, and the best thing is uh, that, that I mentioned the advantages of, of the di different knots. Uh, and the, the best thing with animated knots is also they give you a, a, an alternative to the knot uh, as well. So, so, so that is really awesome. So uh, animated knots, there is a link in the description box. Uh, so you can check it out. Um, and save it in your browser so you will have it to you can return back to it. Um, uh, Davy Nut. Uh, I'm not uh, familiar with that one. Uh, easy and fast tying knot for attaching a hook or a fly. Um, I use a different type of knot when I um, attach the line to the hook. Um, um, and you get also uh, uh, in some, some of the knots, you get also the origin of the knot, which is really interesting. Um, you get some history behind some of the knots, not all of them, but some. Uh, the Davy knot was created in the 1950s by Davy Watton when he was competing in the Welsh fly fishing team. He was exper experimenting to find a knot which he would be able to tie extremely quickly, which makes a lot of sense. Less time tying knots equals more time catching fish. Yeah, I, I can agree with that too. Um, uh, try uh, tying it. The animation shows that the Davy knot initially forms a half hitch around the running end. It is all too easy to make mistake the next step as a creating a figure eight knot. However, carefully making a half hitch first prevents this and also creates the loop required to accept the final pass. Yeah. Um, and on the sum of the knots, they mention also positioning the tag end. Um, and they also mention the relative diameters of tippet and eye wire. Uh, uh, 
and the advantages the Davy knot is small and economical with practice it can be tied using up only a smallest amount of tippet length it can also be tied extremely rapidly even in cold and awkward conditions yeah that is something else when it comes to knot tying when it's cold and awkward conditions it can be really hard to tie the knots I have been there, done that, so I know uh, it can be really difficult uh, when your fingers are cold and your fingers are numb, you can barely tie your shoes. Uh, so to tie a, a knot on a, a fishing line to a hook, in cold and awkward such conditions, that would be really difficult. So uh, that is why you need a knot that is better suited, that is easy to tie and fair, simple. So uh, it has been claimed that the Davy knot is extremely strong by comparison with other knots. That may well be true. Claims that it retains 100% of the line strength must be false. Careful tests suggest a much smaller percentage, around 50 to 60%. At a smaller percentage, well, 50 to 60% is pretty good, actually. Um, Davy himself says it's a favorite nut for those who compete in international fly fishing competitions. Okay, uh, the disadvantages is as follow. Some users have found it holds very poorly when braided line is used, but this problem to may be solved by using the double Davy knot. Yeah, that is another part of it. Uh, Here we have the double Davy knot. That is the other part of it. Um, you need to know what line you use. If that is a braided one, that takes a different types of knots because the line is, bra is braided. So you can't use your regular fishing knots for a braided line. So you need to use different knots for braided lines because they hold up much better um, well it's um, this with uh, with knots is it's a whole science basically um, but it's fun Uh, friction based with stoppers. Yeah. Uh, I find if you apply the knots, more likely to rem remember it. Yeah. I agree with you about that, CR. Um, I did tie a tumble hitch in a 35C once for training purposes. Did that work well? CR, did that experiment work out well for you? Um, uh, this is how you tie this one. So basically, it is a pretty simple knot uh, to tie um, and easy, to, easy and fast to tie. So, well, practice, practice, and practice. That is the only way you can learn this. Um, Um, and then they have uh, another knot, a double turl knot, a simple knot used to tie a hook or fly to a leader. Okay, 
this knot is uh, obviously for fly fishing. When you have a fly fishing rod and back line, fly line, leader and tippet, okay. So we can take a look at this one as well. Uh, it looks like a mess when you, uh, at the beginning and what a mess you created and they create and and then it turns out the knot um, looks really good and less mess. Some knots, when you look at them, it's a mess when they begin to tie them. And then the knot turn out to be really beautiful. Like that one, so. Uh, this one has also an origin, um, a history. British Major William Greer Turl popularized the original version of the double turl knot in the late 1800s. However, according to some accounts, Turl himself did not claim to have invented it. Early history. Okay, we get... Uh, um, Nevertheless, in modern improvements in fishing tackle and fish hooks, 1886 edition, P20, Colomon Penal said that he had been in the habit of using a very ingenious knot invented by Major Turl and known under his name. Attached to the turned down eyed hook, it answered. Um, ex ex excellently well as I can testify from experience having used nothing else for many weeks in sea and river fishing. However, by 2006, his enthusiasm for the turtle had been sur superseded by the half-hitch jam uh, in fishing with contributions from other authors, Summon and Trout. He wrote that he, the half hitch jam is, in fact, the knot which I have always used and recommended for a bear hook in preference to the turl or any other knot. In consequence of its combined neatness and absolute security from, from slipping. 1906 edition, P tw page 27. Uh, it is obviously certain variations of this knot as well. Uh, with fishing lines then available, the original turtle just employed a simple slip knot that was dropped over the fly. One loop was sufficient, there was no additional knot, and the end was not trapped under a knot. Modern slippery lines demand improvements. Uh, the double turl knot shown here uses two loops. The loops are held by an overhand knot. And the loops grip the tag end. Some writers add an extra turn to the knot to make a surgeon's half knot. Uh, okay, that was interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, the double turl knot is used while fishing to tie a hook or a fly to a leader. Uh, other names, the double turtle knot has also been misnamed the turtle, turtle knot and the turtle knot. Yeah, some knots get... <laughs> some nicknames. Um, I go back and see if there is Jing Vlog Shorts, California. And if, welcome to the stream. I appreciate it. Dress it up at the end. Indeed. Um, This was dropper loop knot. Um, 
creates a large loop in the middle of a line. Yeah, you might need that sometimes. Um, it is the way they tie it reminds me on uh, Prusik knot. But the, uh, there is a difference uh, in the way how you tie a Prusik knot and uh, this knot. Um, okay, this one creates create a large loop in the middle of a line holding the center wrap the loop around this crossover point about six times, open a hole in the center and pass the loop through the hole. Lubricate, hold the loop with your teeth and pull the top knot tight. Note, in nylon tightening, this knot alters the structure. structure. Um, uses the rubber loop knot creates a loop that stands out at right angles to the middle of a length of line. It can be used in your leader or tippet to provide an extra attachment point for an additional fly. If desired, the loop can be made long enough to set a hook directly on it. However, to minimize the risk of fouling and twisting, this dropper loop should not be too long. The drop and loop knot is also used on multi-hook fishing lines. That is something I didn't know. So that is actually a new information for me as well. So uh, and there are obviously some alternatives uh, to the knot. The same result can be obtained by keeping the loop still and twisting a match stick in the overlap to make a spiral. The big loop is then passed through the hole occupied by the match stick. Amos Baer contributed an idea he discovered serendipitously when he tried a ballpoint pen instead of a match stick. Use the clip of the cap of a ballpoint pen, clip it on to one uh, side of the loop and rotate it instead of rotating a matchstick. The weight of the pen is an advantage. Whichever method is used, the dropper loop knot should appear almost symmetrical either side of the loop. Advantages, the dropper loop angles away from the line, which helps to avoid tangles. Yeah, you don't want tangles. That will mess things up. So, you need you need a knot for that, and they give the knot some uh, fancy name and some fun names. Egg loop knot, never heard of before. Uh, attaches hook to a leader and provides a hold for bait. Okay, the, the, that could be really useful actually. Um, let's see how they tie this one. Okay, that looks pretty simple. Okay, that's cool. So uh, I don't believe this is a uh, um, so this one is not that complicated or difficult to tie. So, but as I said, it takes practice and practice and more practice, but to uh, get it right. Um, uh, 
names, the egg loop knot is all is also sometimes known as the bumper knot. It is a modification of the Snell knot in that turns are wrapped prior to the end being passed through the eye for the second time. Yeah, exactly, Sion. The wraps around are usually to add friction to hold them, like Prusik, for example. Yeah. Similar to wrapping paracord around sheath or handle. Yeah. Okay, this is not the most beautiful knot, but securely joins braided line to leader. Okay, this is uh, for braided lines. Braided lines is different from monofilament line. Okay, that looks like a pretty reliable knot. Uh, this knot is also known for as the known as the GT for its value in catching the giant tre trevally, a large tropical apex predat predator that usually feeds on fish but occasionally on birds, as shown in this Animal Kingdom video. Uh, another name is the Sibyl knot after the Frenchman Pat Patrick Sibyl, who supposed to, supposedly introduced the knot. A telephone call to go to the company confirmed this, but the Sibyl company website makes no reference to it. And FG and GT are in widespread use in North America. The FG name has various explanations, including fine grip, freaking good, and possible originator Fred Goldman. But that would be in conflict with Patrick Sabi's claim. Um, there are obviously uh, different options for finishing it too. Some writers tie all the half hitches rotating in the same direction. Others alternate as is shown in the animation here. In addition, there is wide variation in the number of half hitches tied first around both lines and then around just the braided line. The finish can be a triple half hitch or a couple of double half hitches or a long chain of single half hitches. Okay, that is good to know. Uh, And the next uh, is um, improved clinch knot. Attaches a fishing line to a hook, lure or swivel. Okay. Uh, hey, Huga, good to see you. Welcome to the stream, my friend. Good to see you again, CB. Uh, this 
seems to be a very easy knot to tie. So, um, the the improved clinch knot is one of the most widely used fishing knots. It provides a good method of securing a fishing line to a hook, lure, or swivel. The improved version shown here includes an extra tuck under the final turn. Step nine, um, it is commonly used to fasten the leader to the fly because it's harder to tie in heavier lines. It is not recommended if you are using over a 30 pound test line. Um, There is also an alternative method for this, uh, this one. Another method of tying the improved clinch knot is to hold the line and tag end in your fingers and with the other hand rotate the hook or lure to obtain the desired number of twists. Well, it, it depends on what you are, you uh, get used or used to. Um, probably some uh, prefer to do this alternative method to do it. Um, Sorry about that. Um, the improved clinch knot is regarded as a fisherman's reliable standby. It is particularly suited for attaching a small diameter tippet to a heavy wire hook. The extra final tuck improves your chances of holding a strong fish. Okay. Um, so basically it's a very useful fishing knot. Um, let's see, um, okay, nail knot, used to join two lines of different diameters, um, that could really be useful actually. Um, Okay, that is a, a pretty secure knot. Um, the nail knot was originally named because a nail was inserted as a guide when threading the line. Today it is easier to use a small straw if you can find one. Um, there are also an alternative to this. Um, alternatively, the line can be threaded beside a nail, hence its name, or pulled through with a needle. Okay, good to know. Um, the nail knot makes a smooth, compact knot that readily passes through the guides. Yeah. Um, Non-slip mono knot creates a very strong fixed loop in the end of a line. Um, how are you doing, Huga? I hope everything is okay with you.
uh, tie a loose overhand knot and pass the tag again through the eye, then back through the overhand knot, wrap the tag end around the standing end about five times and back through the overhand knot. Lubricate, tighten, and trim the end. Um, Origin. The non-slip monon knot is a higher strength version of the original Homer Rhodes loop knot where the tag end was only hitched once around the standing line. The non-slip mono was developed by Lefty Cray during his series of tests to create a strong loop knot. It was then incorporated into the book Practical Fishing Knots, which he co-authored with Mark Sosin. Accordingly, it is quite often known as Lefty Chris Loop Nut. Okay, good to know. Uh, the purpose for this knot is the non slip monon makes a very strong fixed loop in the end of the fishing line because the loop doesn't grip the lure it makes a flexible attachment and allows a more nat natural action uh, test weight pounds six to eight uh, number of turns seven is required um, eight to twelve pounds five turns fifteen to forty pounds uh, four turns and fifty to sixty pound three turns sixty pound plus uh, two turns The non-slip mono knot is a fairly easy to tie. Lefty Crea discovered that the knot retains most of the line's rated strength, so much so that in some of his tests the strand broke rather than not the knot. Other another advantage is that the tag end faces the hook, so it doesn't catch grass and other things on the retrieve. Good to know. Hey, and Pinay Vlog 14, good to see you. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Uh, Orvis not. A uh, strong, small, light, and reliable not to attach a hook to a line. Um, Um, uses. The Orvis knot was invented by Larry Becker, who submitted it in a contest held by the Orvis, Orvis company to find the best knot to, to attach a line to the hook. Um, and there are obviously similar knots. The Orvis knot performs a similar function as other line to hook knots, such as the trailing. Palomar, Uni, Duncan, and improved clinch knots. Uh, the advantages is the Orvis knot is strong, small, light, reliable, and easy to remember and tie. Yeah, that's important to remember. They are easy to remember. Uh, otherwise, it will be a problem. It also works well in light and heavy lines and in any tippet material, which is also good. Uh, disadvantages is, as it is being tightened, the Orvis knot tends to set up at an angle. Okay. Uh, 
The orb is not is claimed to retain much of the line's original breaking strain. Okay, that's good. That is good to know. Hey, Kaylin, good to see you. Hi, oh, well, how goes it? Was out on my deck watering my plants and replanting a couple of herbs that had not yet sprouted. Okay, that is some good idea to do that. Uh, okay, so you're in bed now, Ann. Okay. And that is good. You're doing fine. Uh, where am I? Um, uh, Paloma knots. Simple knot to attach a line to a hook or a fly to a tippet. Um, we can take a look at that one too. Okay, that is a simple uh, that is a simple knot to tie actually. Uh, not that complicated. Um The Paloma knot is a simple knot for attaching a line to a hook or a fly to a leader or tippet. It is regarded as one of the strongest and most reliable fishing knots. Well, you need a reliable and um, strong knot. And uh, the knot has also some alternative uh, as well. Um, that is good. Um, some descriptions of the Paloma knot show the final loop positioned against the shaft of the hook rather than pulled further down around the bite. This limits the hook's movement and the majority of experienced fishermen recommend the technique illustrated here. Yeah. Um, the advantages is the Paloma knot is recommended for use with braided lines. With a little practice, it is a knot that can be tied in the dark. That is also a good thing. Some people like to fish in the dark, so it is good to practice to tie the knot in the dark. But that will take some practice for that. Some learn it quickly, and some it takes a little bit longer. Disadvantages. When tying the Paloma knot, the fly or hook has to pass through the loop, which can be awkward and necessitates making the loop large enough. That is awesome, Idaho Garden Girl. So that was the first one I learned. My dad taught me. Later I learned all kinds of knots, but the one I remember best is Paloma. Well, it works usually that way. You always remember the first knot. I do need to learn some knots for more than just fishing. Well, um, Kaylin, I put the link to the animated knots in the description box. So you can um, check a lot of different knots there. They have knots for different uh, purposes.
it's not just only fishing they have. Um, It should say Paloma, not Palomas. Sometimes I really dislike autocorrect. I don't like autocorrect. It messes things up. Actually, Kaylin, I never heard of it before either. So um, that makes two of us. Uh, perfection loop. Um, Uh, when that knot is finished, that reminds me of a bow tie knot, bowline knot. So, uh, use the perfection loop knot was described by Ashley as the English loop. Uh, Number 1017, page 188. It is the easiest way to make a small loop in the end of the of a leader or tippet that will lie perfectly in line with the standing end. It is commonly used to join a, a perfection loop in the end of a fly line to per, a perfection loop in a leader using a loop-to-loop -loop connection. Okay. There is all obviously an alternative to this one. Uh, it can also be tied through a fly or lure by passing the free end along the path shown in frame 7 of the animation. Uh, the advantage is the perfection loop not creates a stable loop that lines up neatly with the standing end using a loop-to-loop -loop connection the perfection loop knot allows for quick and convenient leader changes. That is really useful. Especially when you use words from another language. I try to shut the autocorrect off when I can. Yeah. That sounds like a good idea. I always have the autocorrect shut off. Mm. Neither have I. Makes three. Yeah. Um. Uh, Rapala knot. I didn't know there were a knot called that. Okay. Um, uh, uses the Rappala knot is a non slip loop knot usually tied directly to the lure. Uh, the Rappala brothers uh, recommended for use with the Rappala lures to provide a loop that allowed the lures to move freely and naturally. If a swivel or a leader is essential, it is best 
to choose the lightest tackle possible to allow the lure to move with a natural motion. Um, and we have some history on this knot too, which is awesome. Um, I like the history behind the knots. Um, I am indebted to Lefty Cray for his history of this knot. The original Rapala knot showed one turn around the main line with the tag end, then one pass through the overhand. Cray tested it and found that it was not particularly strong, but he markedly improved it by adding additional turns around the main line. This was the basis for his non-slip mono loop. Years later, the Rapala brothers modified their description to add these extra turns as well as the final tuck under the tag end. Crea then tested this version and found that the final tuck made it harder to tie and added no strength to the non-slip mono. Okay. Um, the advantage claimed for the Rapala knot is that it allows the lure to move naturally. It is allow also claimed to retain most of the line strength. And this might be expected as the structure of the knot passes the force to the loop via a wrap in the center. Um, disadvantages, the tag end faces away from the hook and therefore has a greater tendency to catch grass, etc during retrieval when then the non-slip mono left Cray. Okay. Um, San Diego jam knot attaches a hook to a line, retains line strength very well. Okay. Mm, uses the San Diego jam knot is also known as the reverse clinch knot and has the Heiliger knot. The San Diego jam knot was popularized in San Diego, particularly with long range tuna fishermen. It is reasonably easy to tie at sea and is suitable for monofilament braid, braided and fluorocarbon fishing lines. Okay, that's good. One knot for all three types of lines. That's really awesome, actually. And the knot looks really nice, too. Uh, number of turns. Uh, this is important. Uh, the number of turns should be decreased with the size ranging from about seven to eight turns for 10 pound line down to three turns for 40 pound line. Yeah. Strength comparison testing suggests that the San Diego jam knot probably retains the strength of the line better than most fishing knots. Um, advantages the San Diego jam knot is relatively easy to learn and to tie even in adverse conditions yeah that is a good thing um, if not other knots would be a, a nightmare to try, try even to tie in an adverse situation. Um, slim beauty knot. Okay. Excellent for joining lines of different diameter or material. Okay. So basically, I have first figure eight and then, okay.
Um, the Slim Beauty knot is an excellent knot for joining different diameters and different materials as shown in the animation. It is useful when tying a large tippet to the main line. Tarpon fishermen use it because it's strong and easy to tie and many people use it as more uh, as a more convenient alternative to a bimini twist. Uh, origin. I like that when they put out the origin of knots. Um, the Slim Beauty knot is attributed to partially to Tom Pierce, who initiated the development while working as a light tackle guide in Key West during the 1970s. It was further refined by Simon Becker in the early 1990s for use in tying tarpon leaders. See his review in mid-current. Okay. The best thing with animated knots is uh, when you check the knots and in some on some of them you have this. So you have a link so you can click there and read the review. Having read this his account about how the knot was first named. I might be tempted to use it just so I could retell his story. Um, breaking strain. Um, many writers claim that it tests at close to 100% of the line's breaking strain. However, these claims compare their results to the line's rated strength. 30 pound line rather than to line tests performed in the same environment with appropriate test equipment. If anyone has performed such comparisons, please send me the data. Yeah. Uh, advantages. The slim beauty knot is used to join braided to mono as well as small diameters to large diameters. Uh, it is a ver versatile knot which is relatively easy to learn and remember. It is also compact and straight when completed. Yeah. And in my opinion it's a beautiful knot. Then we have the snow knot, allows the leader or tippet to be directly tied to a baited hook. I have to jump off now. Your live stream has been interesting. Thank you. Have a great rest of the weekend. Thank you, Idaho Garden Girl. Take care. Stay safe. And God bless. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh... The snell knot allows the leader or tippet to be directly tied to a baited hook. This fishing knot was originally invented for use with eyeless hooks, but it is still widely used today. The snell knot aligns the fishing line or leader with the shank of the hook. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Advantages: The snell knot is one of the older, fish, the older fishing knots, and is claimed to provide a reliable connection that preserves the strength of the fishing line, particularly if the thickness of the eye is greater than the line diameter. Yeah. So um, it seems to be a pretty easy knot to learn. So. Um, I'm gonna try this one. Uh, try to tie that one uh, when I 
have some time uh, surgeons join not okay reliable way to join two lines of moderately unequal size okay um, Okay. Uh, the surgeon's knot or surgeon's join is easy to tie and is useful useful to join two fishing lines of moderately unequal size. A tippet to a leader, it is actually tied as a double overhand knot, which probably explains why it's sometimes known as the double surgeon's knot, redundant because surgeon's knot implies the use of the two turns. The surgeon's knot allows you with the same leader to select the size of tippet to suit the size of the fly. It is usually used to join two pieces of monofilament. Yeah. Uh, alternative, as an option, the two lines can be passed through the overhand knot a third time to form the triple surgeon's knot. Um, advantages, the surgeon's knot is one of the easiest knots to learn and is an excellent, excellent knot to join two lines on moderately unequal size. Disadvantage, disadvantages is it is rather bulkier than the blood knot and creates a slight angle in the line well i guess you can live with that with that slight angle um, surgeon's loop knot end of line loop often used to make a loop to loop connection okay another one uh, uh, is for a loop to loop connection. Okay, that was, um, that looked really easy to tell that one. So, uh, uses the surgeon's loop is essentially a double overhand knot. It can be tied quickly and easily in the end of a line, it is used uh, often used to make a loop-to-loop -loop connection in the same way that two elastic bands can be hooked into each other. It can also create a fixed loop that allows the artificial lure to fly to move naturally. Hey, CR. I was just seeing how long you would you could go for on your own, but I went, eh, why not join them? <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, nice to have one, someone who joined me up here. So, um, so, CR, what do you think about? You know, that's, that, that site, and, and there is similar sites to this, by the way. It's a very useful way to try to learn some knots, or, or at least yeah. some of them, a few. I, when I was learning some of these, I learned some of the more easier ones, and then I graduated to ones that were similar, right? Yeah. Like maybe it's similar to the Prusik knot, like when you look at it, right? So maybe it would stick a little bit better because, you know, if you, it's like uh, bu building on the foundation, right? Because I know yeah. some of these knots have less steps, <laughs> right? So, I, you know, I would choose one that, oh, okay, this sounds, this looks useful. It's only uh, three or four steps. I should be able to do this and, you know, go on from there. Yeah. Uh, this... This one is 
looks similar to the one I usually use. Uh, but it is the one I use is not the same knot, but it's similar. Um, the Charlie knot is a strong and reliable knot to join monofilament line to hooks, swivels, and lures. It resists slippage and failures and is an excellent and stronger alternative to the clinch knot. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the double wrap of the line to the eye takes some of the strain and may be responsible for claims that trial in knot retains a high proportion of ideal line strength. This is more likely when the thickness of the eye is greater than the line diameter. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, uni knot used for snelling, uh, creating loops and and end-to-end -end joints. Okay. Um, we take a look at that one too. I'm so fascinated with this with this website. Um, oh yeah, you, you can see, see the how, wraps around her. Yeah, you can yeah. see the wraps in there. Yeah. And then, it, yeah, then it's dressed up. Yeah. Names. The new uni nut was invented by Norman Duncan and is also known as the Duncan nut. It was also published later under the name uni nut by the outdoor writer Vic Dunway as being a versatile nut that can have many applications. It is also known as a Grinner's nut and has the same appearance as a hangman's noose, although it is differently internally. When used to join two lines, it is known as double grainer or double uni knot. Uh, and I like actually knots that are versatile. If you have a knot, a fishing mm -hmm. knot that is versatile, you can probably use them uh, use it for other applications as well, such as the blood knot. For example, right? Yeah, because usually, it's something like that would be used for splicing, uh, connecting a uh, line together of similar diameter. Yeah, I mean, there's air knots to connect uh, non-similar, uh, different diameter line. I think like the square knot or is the reef knot. Yeah, for example. Uh, pros and cons. Uh, the uni knot works well with both braided and monofilament fishing lines, and with practice, is fairly easy to tie in the dark. Claims that it retains a high proportion of line strength have been justified by the re by recent testing arranged by Mac Martin that showed 82% of line strength when tied around a large diameter eye. It may retain strength well, but if used to join two lines like other knots where a line passes around itself, a breaking strain around 75% is more likely. And, and that is not bad. That is not bad. 82% is pretty good and 75% is pretty good too. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I had um, put this uh, li link to this uh, website in the description box just to mm -hmm. remind people. Um, yeah, I was going to say, Shadow, um, I've been you know, I was never that great with knots, but I think some, a site like this has definitely uh, increased my skill or knowledge level in, in terms of knots. Just because it's, I mean, some of them are, you have to get used to tying it or doing it. But once you start doing it and understand it, it just becomes second nature. Where it's like, you can actually do it blindfolded with cold hands, right? Because it yeah. becomes more of like muscle memory over time, especially if you apply the knot. Yeah, like in, exactly. Not just in fishing or survival purposes, but maybe camping uh, situations at home, maybe for gardening purposes. I know sometimes people have to tie things at yeah. home, you know. 
stuff like uh, that. It's like find your shoelace, right? <laughs> you yeah, know, you just get better at it as you go along. Uh, I have another one. Um, this is a PDF. Um, I have that link to this PDF in in the description box as well. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, fishing nuts, uh, nuts, nuts for attaching hooks and lures. Uh, we have the clinch knot. Uh, this one is very similar to the one I use. Um, Uh, that was a long, that was a long cordage. I don't need that much. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, just just braid it so it's shorter. <laughs> just braid a little so it's shorter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now I change. Um, I can show that later um, when we get through this one. Um, this one is similar to the one I u normally use. Okay. Like I said or, earlier, this reminds me of those wraps that you can put around like uh, handles and stuff like that. You might see people do it on like their, their yeah. knives off their sheath, like a mortar or something like that. It always reminds me of that, no? Because a lot of these knots you've been showing are very similar to our knots. So I think once you start to notice these similarities, it becomes like, oh, it's just similar to this knot. It's just slightly different, you know? Yeah. You know, how you approach it, so. But this one, uh, is, uh, the one I use is a little bit different from this knot, but it's very similar. Um, then we have the Jansik Special, another beautifully simple knot that can be tied in the dark. I never mm -hmm. heard of this one. Uh, I don't have the name of it, but I have seen. Oh, oh, I know the name. Use of it. It. I know, I know the name of it. It's called Hendel's here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. What's up? What's up, Hendel? <laughs> He's in the chat with us now. Yeah. See, see, see my segue. Hey, Hendo, good to see you. <laughs> nice of you to drop in. Yeah. Um, well, here is the Paloma knot again. Um, the hangman's knot. Uh, okay, I didn't know you could you, you use that on... Uh, uh, I in fishing, I thought that was for hanging stuff. Well, I mean, like, it's funny lately I've been adapting some of these knots and hitches to their things. I think, yeah. uh, how can I say this? There's different ways to apply some of the knowledge, right? Yeah. You know, you adapt it to the uh, situation. Okay, there are at least six variations of, of the hangman's knot. All of them excellent for terminal tackles, swivels, and hooks. The standard hangman's knot holds only five turns <laughs> when tied in monofilament nylon. If tied in rope and used for its, its stated purpose, it takes eight turns. Yeah. Yeah. As I I'm, did, I did. As I'm, I, I didn't say, know uh, there were six ver variations of this one. Not, I didn't know that. But, but it's cool. It's pretty cool. And and it yeah, well, uh, seemed to be reliable too. Yeah, I think you start. I I've started to notice that you know sometimes the the loops that you put in or um. Well, because some of the loops actually add friction to it, so it holds it. So, such as the taut line hitch, right? Two loops in the back, one loop forward right it's tied back in the front yeah for example so that this is really cool that you can use a hangman's knot for hooks that's really cool actually mm. 
uh, the scaffold knot. Uh, I'm familiar with that one. Um, this uh, is a good strong knot that is fairly simple to tie. This knot is used by some flat flathead fishermen. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And the turtle knot that uh, we have talked about that one. Um, snelling a hook. See again, that kind of looks like the wraps that you would put around a handle. Yeah, so, kind of looks very similar. Yeah, uh, and the. Most famous yeah. of them all, the blood knot. Yeah. You know, when I was listening to you earlier talk about that, I actually just did that randomly. <laughs> yeah. Just to see if I remember. Yeah. It's not too bad. It's just a couple of loops, then you just kind of put it back in the center, and then you do it on the opposite side. Yeah. All right. I, I, if I remember right, the end pieces it's better i think it's better if it's actually uh on the opposite side like um if that yeah because even in that yeah yeah because you see it in step two right it actually yeah the, the end part of the line the not the working oh what's that <laughs> what's the terminology not the working end the, the standing end yeah i guess what, yeah the standing end is actually they're on the opposite side so that way, yeah. when you pull the loops together, you pull ends apart, apart, well, away from each other, and then you get that yeah. grip. Yeah, because usually, like I said, those loops actually add like grip into the line. Yeah. So it doesn't. So, like for example, the tail won't slide out. For example, usually, you know, at least three. For example, right? Because I know with the Prusik knot, usually it's three loops on both on both sides. Right, it adds yeah. the friction, and so it, the tail or the working at the uh, standing end doesn't actually slide out. Yeah, and we have the famous surgeon's knot. Well, we got Helda Garn in here. How are you doing, Helda Garn? Thanks for joining us. Hey, Helda Garn, good to see you. How are you doing, Howard Gordon? Uh, not for making loops, the surgeon's end loop. Um, it can be tied quickly and in the dark, okay? To tie a knot in the dark should take some practice. Oh, yeah, I mean. You know, if you think you know a knot or a hitch, try it blindfolded, right? Yeah. Because it, it tests your uh, eight, uh, your ability to remember which way the direction is, the turns are, and where to feed it through, and the feel, just the, the feel of it, right? Where you yeah. Get a it, sense of the feel of it. Because sometimes you might actually have to do it in low light conditions, with colder hands, maybe even with gloves on, for example, right? So. Yeah. It also adds to that kind of muscle memory. Yeah. You're, so you're challenging yourself. So it's like, okay, now I got to try <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah. You need to tie, tie the same knot at least a thousand times to make that stick in your muscle memory. So. Sub ZP, zombie prepper in the house with us. Oh, by the way, Hondo, uh, Idaho Garn Girl is like uh, hey, so I'm gone already. To see you. <laughs> Idaho Garn Girl already slipped out. But we'll send the memo to her that you said hi. <laughs> the blood bite knot. Another end loop can be tied quickly and easily using the blood bite knot. Okay. I'm not familiar with this one, but. Near my. Is, I'm sure the. I think I can understand that. I think I can anyway. 
the blood bite knot is often used for attaching a dropper when fishing deep water with several hooks. Okay. Oh, like 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 for a sinker, like to attach the sinker in. So uh, away from, from the hook? yeah, it says a dropper when fishing deep water with several hooks. So, so yeah, right, you have, bar, at bar. the end of the line you have a sinker and oh yeah, and so so that above way that you have it's, hooks. So it's further away from the actual hooks. So it, yeah, okay. I think I'm trying to understand. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't do a lot of fishing, but I think I can understand that. Uh, okay. Uh, some yeah. members attach the hook directly to the end of the loop, which should be at least 30 centimeters from the end of the line. This is not a good practice, especially when the fish are shy. Far better to attach a single strand of nylon to, sh to a short blood bite knot using another blood bite knot or a surgeon's knot. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Uh, the dropper loop. A better method of forming a loop or loops in the line above the sinker is use, uh, to use the older dropper loop uh, this draws into a knot that stands out at right angles to the line. If desired, the loops can be made long enough to have a hook set on them. And once again, this is not a good practice unless the fish are biting mad, which they rarely are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have seen. Yeah, I have seen this. I'm, I recognize this uh, picture, so I have seen this one. Uh, before uh, the float fisherman uses a running float for casting and general handiness and stops the float from running up the line by using the float stop I didn't know there was a float stop knot this one is new to me uh, it has a lot of these run. knots are new to me I've, oh my yeah. I think I barely know 1% of the site one <laughs> percent barely even one yeah. percent there's probably thousand there are over four thousand knots totally so okay okay yeah, i might know 0.5 percent yeah oh my so i never you know what i use when i have a float and I, i'm casting the float i put above the float i put a sinker yeah and below it, I put a sinker. So it's between two sinkers. Mm. So you can adjust it so it doesn't go up and down, slide up and down on the line. And that works okay. very well. Mm. Okay. Um, because I have a, a, a float that you fill with water and you have to holes at the end so you pull the line through the hole and from the first hole to the next second hole and then okay. it will hang but the problem is that will slide very easily up and down so you need to put a sinker below it and above it okay that is the way i set set that up my okay right yeah I think, you know, I was just coming back to what I said earlier. I think if you were to practice, practice these fishing knots, right, instead of automatically trying it with fishing line or monofilament line, try it with paracord first. Get the, get the idea of it first, right? Where you can actually, actually see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Use paracord, two different colors. And... Yeah. Like a wider, a, uh, a wider diameter type of cordage, right? Whatever yeah. it is, shoelace, paracord, something like that. All right, because I think if you could see it, like you'll you'll be able to see how it forms together and stuff like that, and make sure you you're getting it right. Yeah. And as you get more proficient at it, then try it with monofilament, or, yeah. or uh, because it'll probably be more difficult to start with monofilament. Yeah. 
So um, this PDF are also in the description box. Uh, yeah. I mean, fish and shy or boycotting. Yeah, <laughs> that's handle. Yeah. So what I I normally do when I um, tie my uh, line to the hook is that I just wrap it around so you have and then I pull it through the end and I'll get this okay this loop here so I, I so it looks like this and then I then I then I pull. Yeah, to dress it up. So this is the way I, I tie my to all my fishing hooks all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it works. It has slipped. Uh, uh, get undone sometimes but that has been my mistake basically so okay I see. but but this one works and i cut the end here so it's really nice yeah i mean something like this you can practice while you're watching uh tv youtube you know stuff like that yeah you know, just practice with, let's say, uh, two one-foot pieces of paracord or something like that. Yeah. You know, maybe have a pencil or a pen, you know, for example. Yeah, pencil and pen and uh, or a scissor if you need a loop. Yeah, for, yeah exactly, you know. To kind of mimic that kind of, uh, if you're, you, let's say, for example, a camp, for camping purposes, to, or uh, for, for a peg, for example. Yeah. The, that knot I just showed you, uh, that is, that, that knot, if you need to get take the hook off you have to cut the line because that is you can't undone that because that's mm. <laughs> but i usually cut it close to the hook so mm -hmm. Minim minimize the waste yeah yeah i use it for my uh, wires so oh oh for the for the leader right yeah. Join the leader, yeah, Those join the were, leader, then, uh, then, then join that to the hook, yeah. Yeah, I have a leader and and a, a lock at the end, and it's thin metal wire, and yeah, and I usually well, use usually, that, I'll, I'll, I was gonna say, usually the, the leaders are used so the fish doesn't bite for your line, usually, they're made from metal, right. That way, the fish doesn't bite through your uh, braided one or your monofilament line. As yeah, I use I use a monofilament line. That is the type of line I use. Uh, I have been thinking of to begin to use a braided line, but well, braided line has its advantages. It doesn't have the memory effect like monofilament does. Especially if it's been coiled for like in a small narrow thing or whatever, let's say even in a baggie or let's just say around uh let's say those PVC type of tubes that people you might see on YouTube and stuff like that on videos people use as for fishing yeah. gear, right? You're not get a memory effect from that. Like it'll spiral. You'll have to you'll have to pull it and straighten it back out. And yeah. so you can actually get the full full length of the cast. You know, especially if you're by a lake or something like that, or a, a larger river. 
I guess if you're in a narrow stream or short stream, then that's probably not a big deal, but yeah. Yeah, something like something like this 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 knowledge that, and skill that you get from non tying, right? I mean and it, it probably doesn't even cost anything to learn it or practice it, right? You just yeah. need a piece of cordage to start with to learn it, right? You know, and you practice it, try to get better at it, more proficient at it, right? I am proficient. <laughs> Uh, I swear I didn't. I I did. I swear I didn't even mean to say it like that. But of course. <laughs> well, uh, it's just popped up. So. Yeah. Apparently, I'm proficient at just saying those things. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know you could if you wanted to try it on. I mean, try it out. Like like you have a bo uh, bottle of like uh, soda there, right? Try it. Hold, 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 hold it towards that, right? It's like if it's yeah. not slipping out, it's kind of mimicking like a fish, right? So, oh, the thing's supposed to slide out, right? Because, for example, you know what I mean? And kind yeah, of mimic if that was a hook up with a fish on the line, right? Because the weight would probably be similar, right? And you, oh, yeah, yeah, it's holding it, right? It's not slipping out, you know, even if you uh, jig it or swing it a little, right? And then just like, then you would know, okay, I think I tied it. I did well. It's holding it yeah. and stuff like that, right? It's not slipping out. Because a lot of the time they also say, make sure you test your line <laughs> before you cast it or yeah, or uh, after you dress it up. Like, you know, like a bow line, for example, make sure it's actually, you know, hold it. Yeah, especially if you use a monofilament line. I yeah. noticed, I noticed that I... I had a green monofilament line on mm. on the reel, and when I go went to, for fishing, I noticed the line just broke for me. So, I when I checked the line, it was too old, so it has been weakened. So that why that is why the line broke and i lost my lure so it's, it's a good yeah. idea to uh check your line and change it uh because fishing line has a lifespan because yeah, because the, the salt water, uh, affected, the water, the salt the water, UV sunlight, and sun, and yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. So, storing it for long periods of time, bring it back up. Yeah. And, yeah. So I did the same knot as I always do because it hold up always. But that time, I didn't change. The, I hadn't changed the line for since I bought the uh, rod and the reel. So. <clears throat> That was a big mistake from my side. Yeah. Uh, Especially you like the lure that you're using, or yeah, hopefully, exactly. you know, you know, and you know, heaven forbid, you know, survival situation where it, <laughs> it's the only hook. <laughs> you know, you're gonna make it count. So make sure you have a, a, a strong line. Yeah. Uh, so. If you yeah. see that the line is begins to be doesn't hold the strength when especially when you tie the knots and just and you need to, to tighten the knot and the line breaks, change the line on the reel immediately because that will not hold up. Not even if yeah. a, you will lose a lot of lures that way. So just change. Yeah. The line, fishing line. So, it's basically if you're doing it more for just you know that backwoods activity where it's actually really important, <laughs> you, you're probably gonna make double check everything or triple check. Yeah. I uh, so, an idea is well, just like that. especially in an emergency situation. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it, if you have a if cat, have extra spools with fishing line. Yeah, that are f fresh. So when uh, yeah, and uh, keep rotation on them. So. Yeah, because even uh, people that use climbing rope or whatever, they always inspect all that stuff for it. But that's actually for a good reason, obviously. <laughs> you know, because they're yeah. repelling and ascending or descending from places so they gotta make sure it's good yeah it's not fun if, if you have use a nut that you know is strong enough to hold and when you tighten it the line breaks for you <laughs> that yeah. is not yeah, fun. Yeah. it's not it's, fun. it's just like it's just a little the tug on your rod or, or on your line and it are broke it's like oh uh, i don't think that was that great <laughs> yeah hmm. so well it, it's good, a good idea to learn some uh, fishing knots it it doesn't hurt because i only use uh, one so it doesn't hurt to learn a couple of more um you know maybe some that maybe for different different situations right yeah different and, setups and, right you know yeah, for once then yeah. when you need the bob or you need the sinker attached and stuff like that yeah it, it depends on what kind of setup you decide to use um mm -hmm. that requires mm -hmm. let's say if you have a, the main line and you need an extra line from that going out from the main line and you need to attach a hook there uh, and let's say if you need to have two hooks and a sinker at the end of the main line and you have two fishing hooks and you have maybe uh, maybe you have a bag a bag a bell yeah. or a flag right I know people that do ice fishing, bells and fl little flags for indicators and visual and audio indicators are useful, right? Usually they yeah. attach it to the rod, right? But let's just say you were almost hand fishing it. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. yeah, so that might be useful to know. To hey, Bob. That. Good to see you again, brother. What up, Bob? Bob's in the house with us. Yeah, good to see you, Bob. I hope your week has hey, been good. I'm not trying to think about food, Bob. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Thanks. I was trying to avoid that topic this whole time. I didn't want to get hooked on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> get hooked on it. And you can tie it down. Um, uh, well, when it comes to no, fishing knots, that is a lot. It basically it's so many different types. Uh, I can't count them. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Bob. Hey, guys. I'm eating some Hi, clam Bob. chowder. I'll be with you guys in just a minute. Here. Yeah, no problem. Ah, the lunch. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I drink lemon water, by the way. Water with lemon juice in. It is really refreshing. What what are you guys talking about? I heard a little bit about fishing. Fishing knots. Mm. Uh, I have uh, two uh, two uh, links to um, 
fishing nuts. One is a PDF, and, and I, I can put that link in the uh, private chat for you, Bob. Okay. And the other link I will put in there too, so. Mm. Copy. Those two links. And as I said, there is a a lot of different fishing knots. Um, mm, okay. Uh, I, I, there are probably uh, a couple of hundred uh, different types. Um, hey, uh, Shadow, can you send me that PDF personally to me? Instagram, if you don't mind. Uh, those links. Well, no, no, I know animated nods. I meant the PDF. Ah, that link. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, PM it to me. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. No problem. Hmm. Let's see. Right there. there you have the link, CR. Thank you. You're very welcome. I find there nuts interesting because there is so many nuts totally there are is basically over four thousand different nuts wow um, yeah uh, uh, actually a book of nuts um it contains over 4,000 knots totally. And I think I know like 10. <laughs> Maybe 10. Maybe 10. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. So a lot and of it, them you might not even use, right? Just because, you know, you know, you use technically the better one. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. But then think, there's some of them that are just very similar. Very similar. Yeah. So many knots are similar. There's some that you might just well, there there might be some that you know you just didn't know the name, but oh, I know how to tie. I just never knew the name. <laughs> I can see exactly how many knots uh, the book of Ashley can has. Uh, so we technically have glossary, okay. Um, not what I'm looking for, but yeah, well, actually, three thousand eight hundred and fifty four knots. Good Lord. In this book, yeah, and I only Good have to learn three thousand eight hundred and forty-five more. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Oh yeah, I'll just make a YouTube video for like the next ten years every single day. <laughs> here's their non. Here's their non. Here's their yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, alphabetical um, order. It's a lot of decorative nuts. It's 
uh, fishing nuts. Well, it's basically nuts for everything in this book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, things that you can, ones that you can use for camping. Yeah. Some that uh, may be used for uh, repelling uh, purposes. Uh, like there is also like some uh, household nuts too. Really? Like what? Or for uh, what application? I'm just, I, 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 I am actually generally curious though. I can see if I can find some. Because that something like that may be useful for different situations. Where you got to secure something now, let's say from wind or something like that, you know? Yeah. That's something that people have to do sometimes for whatever, for right? Secure. Or let's say secure uh, the load on the back of a trailer or something like that. Yeah. Or maybe it's that time that you got to put a mattress on top of the van and move it. I've seen that. I've seen people have to do that. And I've also seen mattresses fall off the back of vehicles because they've been secured a load. Yeah. Proper. Yeah. Uh, occupational, not. Uh... Mm -hmm. uh, the skier, not. Uh, the skier, the not. Snow... Yeah, the snow, <laughs> snow wow. spore, not. The stationer not uh, the steeple jack not um, the skater not oh, well, that is so much oh a, lot, a whole bunch of occupational knots shooting camping hunting etc <laughs> knots for everything mm hmm yeah, see, I tried to look for nonce that I can apply in day-to-day -day activities or things that I usually would do or can do. You yeah, know, to apply them in terms of like camping, fishing, maybe stuff like that. Or, Boy Scouts, the seamstress, you know, the stuff ship like that. model maker. Um, That is like even in, even in gardening, you might actually have to use some knots for tying trellises yeah. there or something uh, like that. The rug maker has knots, the rush seat maker, the sail maker, the quilter, the rigger. Shadow could just, just talk about this for the rest of the stream for eight hours, just <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> the, the most common ones I use. Uh, are basically two one is a is a, a half hitch or a double half hitch yeah. and the other one is a square knot yeah and then a, a bow for my shoelaces and that's about it i think that's called the square knot right or the reef knot i'm trying to i'm trying to remember yeah, the, the, the square knot is, is square knot is right over left and then left over right Cinch it. Mm -hmm. uh, the porter knot, mm -hmm. a policeman's mm -hmm. nippers knot. The prospector's knot. Mm -hmm. The nurse is, uh, has obviously not. Uh, the packer, the poacher, um, the net maker, um, kite flying, the miller, the mountain climber, uh, the musician has not. You could do like a whole eight-hour stream just naming knots in Shadow. <laughs> just name knots, you can go on for the next eight hours. <laughs> Even the housewife has knots. Why not? The house painters has knots. The horseman has knots. The hangman has knots. Well, for a good reason. The hammock maker has knots. Um, the gardener has not. Uh, the gardener has actually a knot uh, called espalier knot. 
This draws a plant and it supports together and holds the adjustment without any bother while the knot is being completed. It is convenient to tie after once being mastered. Uh, length on raffia is doubled and a ring or bale sling hitch. Well, it's it has a, a lot of even for gardening. Uh, yeah, I used the knot just the other day for gardening purposes. Yeah. Because I had to connect something to the trellis to the tomato plant. But I didn't want anything too restricting. I needed a, a fixed loop. So it would, you know, just hold it. It wouldn't tighten up, right? You know, so the plant yeah. can still wiggle in there, but it's not just going to yep. fall over. So yeah, I guess even gardening, you can you be using knots and stuff like that. Um, here we have. There's more. Oh yeah, I guess there's also knots for for people that are different uh, knots for fishing hooks. Mm -hmm. Um, hey, look who it is, guys. It's veteran finally here, everyone. <laughs> hey, preparedness veteran, good to see you. Mm -hmm. No camping. <laughs> Go figure. Well, I'm probably going to bounce out of here, guys. It's a rainy, kind of cool day, and I had my lunch, and I'm old, and I'll probably go take a nap real soon here. <laughs> okay, okay, Bob. Okay, we get it. We get it. We get it. I'm an old guy. Yeah, gotta gotta excuse me. Uh, why? No, no problem. Yeah. All right. If you guys are still around a little bit, I'll catch you later. I'm gonna go. Yeah. Go take a siesta. Can't go outside. It's crappy, rainy. So. Yeah. Peace, everybody. All right. See you around, Bob. See you, See you later, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, there is a fishing knot, the salmon knot, uh, as shown to be me by DM Beach. It's both neat and compact. There are other knots will bear this name or the name of some other fish, but there is too little uniformity in the terminology of the anglers to admit of consistent labeling. Uh, mm -hmm. The summon knot, uh, which is that now? Uh, ah, 330. Uh, 313, that knot is the summon knot. Yeah, bowline knots is nice too. Um, uh, I mean, I've I've you you know, like traditional traditionally like the alpine butterfly loop or not is usually used for climbing purposes, or but. I mean, I've used it for different reasons. I mean, usually it's used for to bypass like a a frayed end on the line. But yeah. It also makes a good way to make a fixed loop in the middle of the line. Yeah. Something like a bow line is a fixed loop on the end of the line. Yeah. For example. Uh... Yeah, like a uh, alpine butterfly or not, like I said, it's when you don't have access to the end of the line. Like you want to make a loop in the line, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I know knots like that 
I, I try to apply them as much as possible, you know. Yeah, preparedness veteran. Um, uh, take a look at the pattern as to not uh, very difficult to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that knot. Um, uh, that is, um, as you say, difficult to do. Well, I definitely do not know these. A lot of these knots I don't know. <laughs> oh. Well, preparedness venture, what's it used for though? I think I always tend to use knots that I can actually use. <laughs> Because I'm more likely to remember them because I'm actually applying it, not just like, you know, oh, I know how to do this, but I've never applied it or used it anywhere. <laughs> kind of not. I tend to not remember those as much. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can find the part in us to. I'm going to Google it actually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, I was remembering something in terms of people that do firefighting purposes, even for, for, for forest fires and stuff like that. Sometimes not tying in is important too. Yeah. Right? Because the way that they need leverage on certain things and, and stuff, right? Where they, they're they using rope obviously, right? For the tensile strike, but you know, they gotta, people like then need to know how to, to like approve sick knot, stuff like that, right? You know, or join line together or whatever, right? Yeah. Well, because sometimes yeah. you got to anchor yourself to a tree or whatever, right? So it's nice to. Oh my gosh, the birds are so loud at times. Yeah. Uh, come on, birds. I'm, I'm on a panel here. Can you give me five minutes? <laughs> Just kidding. Can you again? Awesome. Um. Uh... Um, there's a two hook blood loop paternoster. Um, Many fishing nuts are way too complex. I agree with you about that, PV. Um, pretty unique to stop slippage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have to be able to secure ropes to trees or gear or a fire fighter and they have to repel. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can find something. Yeah, I mean, or, you know, they got to make a bow line for rescue purposes, right? Yeah. I like say um, on a boat or something like that, right? A yeah. A loop yeah. that won't shrink or expand. Uh, Stuff like that. I'm gonna see if I can enlarge this a little bit. Um, Paternoster rig. That is a lot of stuff you need for a Paternoster rig, but. Yeah. 
Yeah, you use the as uh, PV says, uh, past or not or not, you use it for instead for a triple swivel. Mm. Yeah, sometimes I use an overhand, not on too. But then sometimes I do actually tie like a bowline or an alpine butterfly whoop in. Yeah. Depends on the application. And it, and especially if I'm trying to retrieve the cordage after, you know, untie it after, right? Because some, 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 depending on the knots or whatever, right? Some of them you can't untie it. Like that one fishing knot, your target mode, you can't yeah. untie it, so you have to cut it. I mean, I'd rather not cut mine if I don't have to, but. You know, especially you tend for to use purpose. an overhand loop a lot. It's quick and easy to untie when needed. Sometimes I'll do a square knot after it to prevent slipping. Yeah. Depends on the application, right? You know. Yeah, many fishing. You know, you're putting up a car. Kind. salvia to enable a good tight knot. Yeah. Actually. Uh, I, I didn't know that, that some knots need lubricating with salvia to enable a good tight knot. Uh, I didn't know that, so thanks for the tip, PV. I'll keep that in mind, too. Well, Shadow, remember, I have mentioned this on one of my streams before, right? Where I've, I've seen... Uh, campers or whatever leave uh let's say paracord or, or tip of line behind yeah. just for the simple fact that they were they couldn't be bothered to untie it or the knots were so hard tightened in there that you know you had to cut it yeah All right i mean i managed to save some of that paracord so i mean sometimes you know knowing some knots can actually save you money too because you know you're not wasting so much line because you can't yeah. retrieve it after let's say from camping or whatever right you know yeah yeah I mean, there's, agree a with you, quick, there's a lot of quick release type of hitches and stuff like that you can use for example right you know you might use uh some sort of peg or uh um <laughs> what's the terminology uh, or whatever just so the loop doesn't come undone, right? Um, oh, what's that called again? I should remember what it's called. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember the terminology right now. It's on the tip line. Yeah. Basically, basically, it's a peg to put in the loop so you can pull back there away. It doesn't come undone until you pull the stick out. Yeah. Or it could be a peg or anything like that. Oh, what's that called again? <laughs> it's like on the tip line tongue. Come on, help me here, PB. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, Kaylin, I mean, something like model filament, it's going to slide a lot more in comparison to, let's say, paracord, hard bank line, and stuff yeah. like that. You know. Yeah, I, I, many years ago, I had a model filament line, and when I tied my regular knot it it's like walked. it wasn't even it, it, it was didn't even walk it, it just, just right out. it was so uh, so you had to do it in a different Probably way a couple more. or add more loops in and yeah yeah okay but not tying yeah, is a you, useful skill useful, yeah. useful skill for a lot of many different reasons right not just camping or fishing. Securing yeah, like your load, that, that securing is, things uh, down. That PV says here, yeah, when you tighten some knots, the line gets deformed. A bit of salvia will enable a quick cinch. Quinch. 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 Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I noticed that. Uh, uh, the line gets deformed. It happened to me pretty frequently, but mm. 
that is something you can't do anything about when it happens. But well, a bit of salvia will enable a quick cinch. Well, that is that is a good tip. Mm. If you don't mind. PB has good ideas and good tips. Mm -hmm. Indeed, he does. Uh, Indeed. <laughs> I figure I throw that. I throw. I figure I throw that word. Your favorite word, then. <laughs> yeah, I know. I like that word. Indeed, it's a very useful word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll catch up soon. Gotta go for now. Okay, take please. care. Take care. Take care. Stay safe. God bless. And thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Can you still hear me? I uh, my headset. Yeah, I, I can hear you loud and clear. No, I have to charge my headset. <laughs> yeah, I figured. <laughs> so yeah, I mean. I've been even learning ways to damp some of these knots and the different things that I do. Or it becomes, you know, not just a piece of knowledge or skill, but I'm actually applying it too, right? Which is yeah. more likely you're not going to be able to remember how you're doing it because you actually use it enough. Or it becomes so useful, for example. Yeah. And you get comfortable to you if you use a knot that really works well you you still use it mm -hmm. um, because if it worked before and it's still working so oh very well I, okay you know what i just remembered the, the one word <laughs> toggle okay. toggle that's what i was looking for toggle I couldn't believe I couldn't toggle that out. <laughs> but yeah, a toggle. Usually it's a stick or... I mean, it could be a pen or whatever. It's just like a straight piece. Usually it's yeah. used to put into the the loop so you can pull back on the other end. Without yeah, the you, wrap, you wrap the cordage around and you pull to make it the cordage tighten. <laughs> it's like a... Garrot for uh, your cordage. Yeah, you yeah, tighten yeah. it, so you can basically use a, a suitable piece of wood, and and you can even use a pen for it. So yeah, I mean, you I use that because you don't want to uh, the rope cut into your hands because that will hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, toggle is, is useful, especially when you um, lashing. Uh, if you build, do a construction and you lash it, you, yeah. you need a toggle to keep it tight. Be, if without a toggle, you and you pull without it. Yeah, if you pull that away, yeah. You uh, don't you don't that. get that tight as you want to. So that's why you wrap that around the toggle and you pull and you can tighten it even further. Yeah. I was gonna show you guys here it's a little dimmer, sir. So you're in here, I have a bag right here, right? I actually yeah. instead of just holding it in my hands, I put some cordage around here. This is actually on both ends has the tumble hitch. A tumble hitch is a quick release type of slip knot. Like if I pull, like you could see that loop that I was talking about, right? If I put a toggle yeah. in there and pull the airway, it won't come undone. But also if I pull, uh, I guess this would be the standing end. If I pull that out, it'll come undone. So it's a quick release. It's just a way so I can like carry this bag over my shoulder without actually, you know what I mean? Yes, those yeah. reusable bags, you, it's hard to get over your shoulder, right? It's more comfortable to put the weight on your shoulder, for example, right? So I've, I've done something like that, right? And this is just applying some, 
on uh, the tumble hitch type of knot. So I felt I thought that was kind of useful. I was just like, you know, and I'm trying to apply it to something I can use, for example, right? Like if you were using like a thicker piece of rope or whatever, it'd be quite yeah. comfortable to wear that even with a heavy load like uh, let's say a gallon of milk or something like that. Pop soda. Yeah. So okay, something I keep in mind. But sometimes I actually don't like things in my ha hands when I'm walking, especially during the winter. I rarely have them on my shoulder. Yeah. That way my hands are actually free. Well, I mean, sometimes yeah. you're on the phone or whatever, or you, you know, stuff like that, or you got to hold everything in your hands. Right? Yeah, it, it's more practical to have your hands free because yeah. if something happens, you and you might need the hands to brace so, yourself or to yeah. hold something or whatever. So right? it's better to have it around your shoulder. Yeah. Otherwise, you need to drop what you have in your hand. And yeah, exactly, exactly. So just something I apply to these reusable bags when I go out. Yeah. A tumble hitch. I'm gonna Google it. Well, it should be on the mm. animated knot site. I know that tumble hitch. Let's see if I can find um, Like You can use it to go around poles and stuff like that. Also, I'm running around the handle of the reusable bag. You know, I've used it to section places off, but where I could easily just uh, undo it. Yeah. Because it's a quick release. Yeah. I think you can actually pick it up. It took me a little bit in the beginning to pick it up, but once I started to understand the direction and the which way the cordage is supposed to face and such, and which way to pull, then I'm like, oh, it's be it just became easier, right? Because yeah. sometimes when you're learning something, it's just like the first time is the hardest. As you get understanding it, then it becomes easier, then it's just like, oh, it's even easier than I think, right? It's just... The learning curve, right? You just yeah, get from that exactly. learning curve. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, it it's uh, looks like a pretty simple knot to tie, so yeah. pretty quick. So yeah, if you put a stick or a pen or whatever through through that loop, and you can pull it back so the loop doesn't come out right away until you pull the toggle out or the stick or whatever, right? You could yeah. do that too if you wanted to. I mean, you could just use a piece of another loose piece of cordage too that you have or whatever. It could be anything really. It's just something to put in that little loop that you have. That you would notice it, right? And then you could pull the uh, standing in and tighten it up. And it'll hold it and it won't just come undone. Yeah. For example, right? And you could, like I said, you could do that with anything, salt, like a stick, a pen, a pencil, right? It could be a peg, it could be another piece of cordage, right? It's just so it doesn't actually come out. But you can easily push it or pull it out. Then undo the knot quite easily. I mean, sometimes I've used it for camping purposes and stuff like that. You know, I just need, let's say if you're putting up a, not like a ridge line or whatever, but let's say a clothesline or whatever, real fast, right? Yeah, I could do. I would do something like that. That way. And you can also, you know, on that end, put, you know, your uh, trucker's hitch or whatever, right? Yeah. You know, uh, trucker's hitch is basically a, a way of a pulley system with cordage. So you get a, yeah. a little bit more... Uh, um, mechanical advantage or two to one or whatever it is uh this is another site netnuts.com and this is i'm, I'm less familiar nuts. with this yeah i'm less familiar with this site uh, the here we have beginning fishing knots 
and even salt water fishing knots. Yeah, that takes a different type of knots when it comes to salt water. Um, Well, like I said, yeah. I tried to, I tried to learn knots that I can apply or actually use like right away, because I'm more yeah. likely to remember them because I'm actually using them. Because some of these knots I might not ever use, right? So I'll start yeah. with ones that I'm more likely want to yeah. use or can use. Uh, you don't need to learn four thousand knots, but like no, no you knots. don't. A handful of knots, good knots, you know, relatively useful for a lot of situations, different applications and stuff like that could be extremely useful. Yeah. You know, day-to-day -day re recreational activities, I mean, survival emergency situations, right? Yeah. You know, like the bull line, for example. Yeah. Uh, this is the beginner's not fishing knot section and these <laughs> of knots, course the harbor knot. So these knots we already had in the other one. Mm, okay. So terminal connections. Uh how to tie hooks and other fishing tackle to fishing line? Yeah, uh, hundred percent arbor knot, arbor knot, Baja knot. Uh, actually, that one was new. Uh, uh, the Baja knot is actually a perfection loop. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, there. When it's a new name, I don't know. I check it up, and then it's on. Okay, so that was the perfection knot. Okay, but with a different name. And speak of name, guess who's in here with us? It's Vanessa Kitty. Hi, Vanessa Kitty. Hey Vanessa, good to see you, ma'am. <laughs> Fishing Nas app. <laughs> uh, Centauri knot, a tie line to a hook or attached line to a reel. Mm. Okay. Um, That looks like a mess with all these loops, but uh, at the end it will look nice. Yep, just gotta dress it up, as they say. Yeah, exactly. Nice and tight. Apparently, the birds are really loud today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, birdies are very yeah. loud. Fish and fool knot, not wars winning terminal tackle knot. I like the name of some of the knots because they are so. How could they come up with a name like that? Like fish and fool knot. Uh, the fish and fool not gained a rapid popularity after it was featured in and won its category in North American Fishing Knot Wars series. This strong knot is quite easy to tie and will hold in slippery braided lines. Alternate it's in that department and are the Palomar and the San Diego Jam Knot. Pick whichever of the three you find easiest to remember and tie. Uh, this knot is essentially just a uni knot tied with two turns through the hook uh, instead of one for the uni. The double line is oh, yeah, no yeah. doubt. What... I was going to say, Shadow, that room. 
when you were saying that, that reminds me just some of these nuns are just slightly different just because you add an extra loop or an extra series of turns. Or, or an extra, yeah, exactly. Like, for example, people are familiar with the Prusik knot. Usually it has its free loops going around and obviously the center, right? But if you only go one around, it's called the Lark's head knot. I mean, so it's just, you know, if you can... We have so you can learn the first one. Well, you you actually already know the Mark said not. It's just you do it with one versus three, for example. Uh, how to? Yeah, we have the Jack's knot. Um, uh, Let's see what it says. Okay, that that knot is obviously in Ashley Book of Nuts. I'll uh, be right back. Yeah, no problem. Because the knot is in Ashley's section of nooses, he attributes it to being an effective snare, and thus its origins are likely prehistoric due to the fact that nooses are some of the first knots required by mankind for snaring animals for food. Uh, okay. Knotless knot, a popular carp fishing rig. Okay. Uh, the knotless knot is a popular knot among carp fishermen. Various baits such as bullies can be secured onto the loop section, also known as a hair rig. The rig is extremely effective when tied correctly and actually has some self-hooking properties. Okay. A knotless knot, okay. Pretty cool, actually. Um, there's a lot of uh, knots for flies. World fair knot, tie a line to a hook. I don't know if the world is fair, but I hope the knot is fair. Uh, what does the inf says about this knot? Uh, winner of DuPont's best new knot from 498, 498 entries. Uh, dependent and easy to tie in monofilament and or fluorocarbon line. Um, Created by Gary L. Martin or Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, this terminal tackle knot was selected by a panel of outdoor writers as the best new easy to tie all purpose fishing knot in DuPont core great knot search. He named it the world's fair knot because he first demonstrated it at the 1982 Knoxville World's Fair. Pro bass fishermen are using this knot to tie drop shot rigs by leaving the tag and as long as desired for attaching the weight. Okay. Um. Oh, am I? I am back. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. You know, one, one of the other things I've started to notice as you get better with knots or learn more. Some of them you can actually like 
put together or combine them together to a certain degree. Yeah. I mean, I've actually used the Alpine butterfly knot loop with two uh, yeah. arbor knots at the end <laughs> to do something. Because the way I had to pull something, I needed tension on both both ends, but equal distance. So basically, I was pulling through the center with the butterfly Alpine butterfly loop, and then the ends were just pulling on the thing that I needed to to do. So even something like that, I was like, "Oh, this is useful," <laughs> you know. And then I started to do it a little bit more. I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah, right." Building upon the foundation, right? You know. Thanks, Vanessa, for dropping that link. The moral guides nuts for sailing, fishing, camping, climbing. That is uh, uh, a fav favorite book if, of mine since the 70s. It is here on my shelf next to my couch. That's awesome, Vanessa. Yeah. I'm gonna open that in a new window so I can have it there. So they're all good books. Oh. Uh, when it comes to knots, yeah, the book of Ashley is one of the best. So, but there are other good, really good books, too, actually. So, um, yep, and it's good to have a lot of knowledge out there. You can learn, yeah, yeah, knots that you can learn, knots and hitches. <laughs> And it, uh, um, I checked the moral guide to knots for sailing, fishing, camping, climbing. Um, it uh, it's in a, in a color full color guide, uh, and it's seven seventy useful knots for generations of sailors, fishermen, campers, climbers, homeowners. And all lovers of the outdoors. That 70, is... I'm still trying to work on 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I do actually know 10 at least now. I mean, I don't use them all, all 10 all the time, but lots of them I do use more frequently. Well, not just camping, but home and other places too. I mean, there's actually times where where the knots actually come in handy, you know, uh, someone's trying to tie down something or whatever, right? So I might use like uh, the top line hitch or uh, the trucker hitch, right? For example, yeah. I remember this like one time someone had issues with their uh, their trunk, right? It wasn't catching, so it wasn't locking, so it would fall open, right? As they're driving, right? And you can't drive like that because you can't see in your rear view mirror because you know your hood's uh, not your hood uh, your trunk's up right yeah so basically I just uh, I think what I did was I tied it in a certain way and I tightened it using the uh, top line hitch to tighten it up but it would hold it because it's a friction based type of uh, slip knot it, it's held by friction right but they could easily still undo it and still yeah. open the trunk until they got fixed, right? And stuff like that. So something like that was just like, you know, because I was just, someone was having problems or whatever, and I just helped them out with it. Because so. they needed a way to keep the door kind of more or less shut, right? 
but easily yeah. enough to undo it and you know also open it. Right? So something like that could be useful or whatever. Hey, Huga, welcome back, CB. Huga's back! Yay! Yeah, she's back. Huga she's is awesome. Back. Yeah. Uh, I think I can put my headset back on. Yeah. Yeah, that's how the wall Okay. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear loud and clear. So. No, I just put my headset back on. It only takes 15 minutes to charge back up so yeah I'm sure you guys can hear me on the headset again yeah i can hear Keep you going. loud and clear keep so that's not me. yeah we keep going <laughs> i saw that too uh Kaylin. i saw that one too let's see me that's that very Adorable. Let's all yeah. take a pause for that. Pun intended. You know, that actually that reminds me of something, though. I mean, it could be, you know, these knots. I mean, I know we're specifically talking about fishing knots, but yeah, I guess we're kind of elaborating. Well, I shouldn't say elaborating, uh, more uh, expanding towards our knots because, you know, a lot of these knots can be used beyond fishing. Like the blood knot, for example, right? And since, <laughs> since Galen mentioned about dogs, right, it could, you yeah. could be just securing your dog around a pole or something like that while yeah, you're sitting or whatever. Yeah, for example, right? Yeah, you, you can... Uh, what's the name of that? That is a hitch I was thinking about. I think mm -hmm. it's a hitch. Um, it's a quick... Well, it is an odd. <laughs> Pardon me? Uh, it's a, a quick release. Um, it is uh, used by smugglers uh, to uh, attach uh, their boat uh, temporarily, not permanent. Um, so they used um, uh, smugglers hitch. Yeah, it's like, I know what it looks like. I know how to hide. I don't know the name. <laughs> I think uh, the English name is uh, Smuggler's Hitch. Okay. Um, I mean, I've never really tied things with large diameter. Why? I mean, thicker than a piece of rope, right? I'm talking about like, you know, it's like thick, like, like <laughs> as wide as your wrist or leg. I've never used cordage that thick. No. Nah. Nice stuff. Uh, you know, usually I'm wor working with like, uh, you know, diameters like paracord, stuff like that. Yeah. Um,
<laughs> you know, <laughs> I was just thinking about something. It was just kind of into my, for example, right? Let's say you, and if you think about it, this could actually happen, right? Let's say, you know how your backpack strap connects to your shoulder and then it connects to the side, usually right around your waist, for example, right? Let's just say you you didn't break the buckle part of it, but the strap just kind of, it just wore through, cut through, whatever, right? Accident, whatever, right? And now you have a strap that's not connected to your bag at the bottom, right? For example, right? But something like cordage and knot tying could actually probably help you in there, you know, to connect it back together so you can actually, you know, finish the trip, for example, right? I was just thinking about that, finally. Stuff for that. Well, because you would yeah. have to connect the webbing to the line, let's say paracord, then connect it to the bag, right? I was just thinking, you know, if you had a loop still available, right? Maybe you could use like some sort of maybe uh but uh a re a reef knot or a square knot to connect the cordage to the webbing and maybe a fixed loop or something like that. Maybe even a top line hitch for to increase the tension right of it you know i just i've never done that but you know that could be useful like a way, something to help you out right or if you had the cordage available with you you know you could do somewhere like that that's if you know the skill i have the skill for knot tying right yeah where you can set it up so it's just a little bit better than just connecting it together with a piece of line right where you you can adjust it, right? For example, let's say if you use like a taut line hitch, so you can adjust it, the tension, so you can actually have it tighter or loosen it up until you can, you know, until you can get back to base camp home or whatever, where you can actually make proper repairs. For example, right? Yeah. You know, where something like uh, pins or duct tape or whatever isn't ideal in that type of situation because you have to wear it. And has you want it adjustable so you can have the tension and all that stuff, right? Don't get this uh, That's one thing I do like about those uh, those friction base hitches and knots is that it allows you to adjust the tension on it. Like, for example, you know, like the uh, character said, you can adjust the tension. So if it loosens up over time, you can tighten it back up a little bit more, you know, next day or whatever. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm kind of uh, going to learn knots like that, like, uh, you know, friction-based ones like the Prusik knot, the top line hitch, the Fairmont friction hitch, uh, for example, right? I'm gonna... Uh, this is the knot I'm talking about. Um, um, you you uh, can attach uh, a horse. Uh, Uh, to a pole to tie a horse temporarily to a pole mm. you use this 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 is what, what um, I, 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 I try to find the English word for it but uh, um, which one are we looking at specifically? This one. This is how you tie it, basically. I'm trying this to is... see your my. I I don't see your mouse icon. Or 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 is it the one on the right side right now? Uh, are you talking about that black and white picture on the right side? That looks like isn't it? Uh, um, what's it called? Uh, 
那个酷配就。So when you release the nut, you pull that and yeah, you move, loose. you move one, you pull out the end, and it just comes in then easily. Yeah, Quick release. You can put the stick in there in that loop part, so it doesn't come out easily until you pull the stick or the toggle or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can do whatever it. Out. You know, if you want a little bit more extra security, uh, I'll be right back, sir. Yeah. We did farmers smoke it and harvested collards, kale and spinach for animals. Okay, good. Also made sun catchers for the greenhouse. I hang the collards from the chicken wire so the chickens can eat them more naturally. Okay. Well, all that work must keep you pretty busy. So you had a lot of things to do, my friend. And um, how was the farmer's market? I need to hang a mini sun above my deck. So. Yeah. That sounds like a good idea, Kaylin. And I am back. Here's back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, welcome okay. back. Yes. Yeah, Huga has been pretty busy. Well, I could tell. I could tell. Phoebe's uh, keeping busy here. Yeah. Welcome back, Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of through when you have cordage, and you need and you know and join things together or whatever. The skill yeah. of tying and the knots can be very useful, especially you know. Let's say you know a quick release, right? You know, yeah. it'll hold it, but once you don't need it anymore, quick release is just like and people look and it's just like, well, how'd you do that, <laughs> right? Because they see it, it's just like you just did work with it and you just. Untied it like with mere half a second, right? Yeah, I just pulled this out and look, it comes undone, all right? Like the tumble hitch, for example, right? I think, you know, I actually have used the tumble hitch before with, you know, when people are moving or whatever, right? And they have like a moving vehicle or whatever, right? Let's say they have like uh, things that stand up, let's say like lamps and stuff like that, right? And you're trying to, Make sure the cables are kind of not dangling on the ground, right? You know, they're with the lamps and stuff like that. And they're, maybe you're putting airplanes with it, right? I've actually used the tumble hitch before to join all that stuff together. And by the time, you know, we unpack again, put it, and I just quickly, oh, what are you untie this? Oh, it's just like this. You just pull, pull this part out, and it'll undo itself. And they're like, wow, that's so useful. All right. Yeah. You know, for, for example, right? Mm. 
you know, people people say at times to me, it's like, oh, I don't like uh, complicated knots. Yeah, but I also don't like undoing, taking forever to undo knots <laughs> after the fact. Let's say, you know, like uh, camping purposes, right? You know, yeah. I want to be able to put up camp, yeah, but I also want to tear it down kind of easily too, right? I don't want to be fiddling with hard knots that I have to take, you know, like an awl or something like that to pull it, out, pull the knot out. For example, right? That's why I like the tumble hinge, for example, or the quick release knots. Sometimes for camping purposes, or things that are not permanent, or you know. That is good, Vanessa, that your tomato plants are getting big and look healthy. Nice, nice. Simplest nut for the task at hand. Yeah. Yeah, Vanessa. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've used that tumble hitch quite even more, even probably almost as much as I used the Arbor Boss or a plot line. Just because, like I said, sometimes that simple quick release is just, it's so nice, right? I can adjust yeah. it or whatever, right? When I don't need the lineup or whatever, then it's just like, look, oh. right? I can undo it yeah. with one hand, right? Yeah. Can they deal? Yeah, you can tie the bow line with one hand too. I still have to actually learn how to do that with one hand around my waist. <laughs> doing it. I know I do it with two hands and make it, make it, but I tried to I, do I, it I, with one hand, but I, the head I have not been able to do it yet. At least not yet, anyway. Yeah. I gotta learn that. <laughs> I mean, some sometimes like even the Alpine butterfly knot, where we, there's two ways of doing it, right? It's cool. Yes, EB, I, guess, I bet it is the busiest time of the year. You know, I think once uh, you get comfortable with knots or whatever, and then setting up like base camp with tarps and stuff like that, becomes, it doesn't become a chore, it becomes fun. Because it's like, oh, I get to use this knot. <laughs> I get, I get to use this hitch right here, or whatever, right? Yeah. And since you've used it and stuff like that, and know how it works, you're like, oh yeah, I know it's good. <laughs> you know, especially if you want to put down yeah. like a, a, a tie down point or uh, yeah. anchor it to a peg or something like that, right? Depending on the application. Stuff like that. Well, because you know, sometimes when you let's say if you go camping with other people or whatever, right? Sometimes you're joining tarps together just to make shade. Yeah. You know, um, for example, and you know it's summertime right now, <laughs> right? So let's say if it's hot out, you're trying to join tarps together, right? I've actually used these knots and stuff like that to join tarps together because I'm joining the yeah. line together. But in a certain way, let's say I don't have very specific examples, but it could be as you know. I'm using um, a proof signal to join it to the line, the main line, and the proof signal has one end extended out a little, so I can join that to another tarp and bring tarps closer together. But since the proof signal is held by friction, I can still slide it almost like a current, right? Be like, yeah, see, we can get some more airflow. Oh, all the sun's over here now. We can tighten it back up, for example, right? Yeah. So something like that gives you options, right? And when you sh people see it, they're like, oh, wow, this is so useful for you. Right? For example, right? So I try to apply it like that whenever possible. Thinking of setting up a ca canvas tent in the yard, I need to sleep under the stars. Yeah, that's nice to do. Sleep under mm. the stars. 
Not I would do that. I would do that, but yeah. it's supposed to be raining. <laughs> so that's no, not happening. <laughs> that will be probably that's not happening. soaking wet. Okay, okay, who got non permanent? Oh, I put it, and you, you guys thought I was bad at it. <laughs> Not too shabby compared to CB here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not permanent. Yeah. That one was good. The tent can double as workspace as I make the work benches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need workbenches. So if you can use uh, a tent like that, it is. It is good. Yeah. Like I, Not I remember theory. a few. An area of active mathematical research across dimensions. Yeah. Like, go ahead, see. I, mean, I was going to say sometimes, like, you need to join line together because you know, let's say, you need to a little bit more distance, right? And the cords just slightly short, and you don't, you know, and you're not trying to permanently connect it here. You just you just need a temporary because you're camping or whatever right for more air yeah. for whatever right so something like the blood maybe maybe not necessarily the blood knot but like a, a square knot or a reef knot could be useful to join the line together it'll still hold the tension but you know it's relatively easy to undo for example right you know, let's just yeah. say you're main, uh, connecting it to this main line and you're fly together, oh, right? Just so it's connected know. together so it doesn't fly off, you know what I mean? So you just need something to hold it together temporarily. But secure enough that, you know, it can hold it up against the wind. But something easy enough that it doesn't take forever to untie it once you tear but down camp or whatever, or move on, or go home, right? Yeah, I agree. I'm trying to come. Oh, I'm trying to remember some actual examples that I've actually used a lot of the stuff knots for and hitches for. Stuff. Just like I said, sometimes you can use them in combination. Yeah. So some of these hitches are not. Because, for example, like uh, an arbor knot, a bowline, is usually at the end of the line, right? Yeah. Something like an alpine butterfly loop or knot could be in the middle of the line and stuff like that. So, for example, I mean, I, I think I've actually used an alpine butterfly knot before to shorten the length because we needed more tension, but I didn't want to yeah. cut the line. And they were already joined at the end, <laughs> right? And I could, I just needed to shorten it a little, right? So I actually added an Alpine Firefly loop in there real quickly. Yeah. And I held it in there, for example. I think actually I used, I used, I used the loop that I made with it to hang like a lantern or a lamp or something like that. So it was quite useful, right? And afterwards it was easy to undo. Because I'm not a big fan of like really hard knots. No, quote unquote granny knot or whatever you want to call that kind of thing. You know? Yeah. Because uh, this is I, tensioning knots or knots that allow it to add friction hold on a rope to help control the speed of letting out of their rope. Prusik. Yeah. Yeah. Prusik knot. Uh, uh, Pawline hitch, the Fairmont friction hitch are all friction based because they, yeah. they have series of loops going around, right? 
You'll notice, you'll notice that. That's why when they say to dress it up, a lot of those loops should be side by side and kind of parallel. So the loops going around the line are parallel to each other, not overlapping, for example. <clears throat> So you exactly. get all that friction holding the line, right? For example, so it doesn't necessarily give out or slip, all right? Yeah, I'm just trying to remember some of the inheritance that we use line and or knots in a certain way that would kind of help. Using the blocks and pulleys safely and properly is important. The ropes and knots are critical. Yeah, I agree with that, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. You need to use the right knot mm -hmm. for, for the application. Yeah, exactly. For the application, depending what it is, right? That's why I'm, you know, stuff like learning like uh, an alpine butterfly loop or butterfly knot, so you can make a yeah. uh, fixed loop in the center or joint or bypass uh, a frayed area on the line if necessary, right? Uh, tumble hit, not the tumble hitch, um, arbor knots, the top line hitch and stuff like that. The uh, Prusik knots, the Lark's head knots, right? And yeah. I find I use those quite often. Yeah. You can do quite a bit with just knowing it. four or five knots like that. Also, on a fishing note, one must be able to have a way to help haul in larger fish. If you are by yourself, having the block and tackle to haul ready to go helps. Yeah, I bet it does. But that must be a very, very big fish if you need that. Like tuna or uh, mar blue marlin or something. You should have remember that. Remember, well, I don't have that coffee mug anymore, but remember how I told you I used Portage with my coffee mug or travel yeah. mug? Before? Yeah, that was just you. Well, because it had a little handle like going downwards, like a uh, upside down L or whatever at that time, right? Yeah, so basically, I, what I did was I used two tall line hinges underneath the lid, right underneath the hand, the actual handle of this travel mug underneath the lip and because the line was slightly longer i actually added a uh, alpine butterfly loop just to shorten it a little that way i could hold it over my shoulder for example and the top line hitch would hold the cordage to the container in this case right yeah. so this is something like this came to mind right i was just like and it was so convenient because now I had hands free, right? I could I, I could go for a walk with my coffee mug and I'd have to hold it the whole time. Go yeah. for a walk with it and stuff like that. It's very useful. And that was just applying the knowledge of the knots. Right? Yeah. And the knowledge of the top line hitch, the knowledge of the alpine butterfly knot, right? Or loop and just doing it. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, Vanessa, and with my hands, never, are, you know, your hands are free. my hands are free, right? The king summer. It was nice during the winter. Before. It was definitely nice during the winter time when I yeah. used it. All right. If my hands were always free or I can put them in my pocket, I'm not holding something in my hands the whole time. I'm walking. You know, and stuff like That's that. That's a big fish, my friend. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I could tell now. All 69 plus pounds of it. Hmm. Having a line to get around them to go in, uh, haul in helped immensely. Yeah, I bet it did. With that weight. 
And that size of a fish, yeah. Oh, I can see what you mean now. Vanessa Kitty, I think. It's just uh, 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 tow trucks, for example, right? <laughs> you know, they they pull, there's one way of pulling, then someone else pulls from the other side to kind of, so you can actually spin it. Let's say the vehicle or her truck that's in the ditch or whatever, right? It reminds yeah. me of that now. Biggest I reeled in was 245 pounds. Hmm. That's oh, well. a lot of weight. That's one big fish. Indeed. Indeed. Are you sure that, was, are you sure that wasn't like some whale? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know you, you do. That's a big fish, but on 245 pounds. That's a good sized fish. You know, I can't stop thinking about things that people use cordage for now. <laughs> I keep thinking about it on and on. And just yeah. like there's a whole lot out there you think really, really think about. Technically, tow truck drivers use cordage, except for it's metal and it's called a chain. <laughs> and they use pulleys, but you know. But in, in the more simplistic uh, terms of it, it is a form of cordage form of block and tackle right it's fillet probably two feet wide that's a big fillet four fillets that have oh, yeah, no. six inches thick or more and four feet long each oh man I sliced that up in too many individual fillet pieces and tail fish out on to a bunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, Kelly. We can just wrote. I think a little just recently here, yeah. Is it, you know, I don't know how many times have you actually seen a chat or the side chat where, you know, you've actually seen, well, I've actually seen a mattress fall off <laughs> someone on a van or a truck or whatever, right? I just yeah. saw that, right? And the thing is, they were, they were lucky it was on the side road, not, not much traffic, yeah. right? But if you're in the middle of the highway or whatever, or a busy road, that's really dangerous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you can heavily get fined for not securing your load properly on the road. Dude, right? so Especially if you cause an accident from that, right? So. Like, I know a lot of people use bungee cables or whatever, but if you're just tying it down with normal cordage or whatever, you know, stuff yeah. like uh, the trucker's hitch or the stuff like that, can be useful. You know? Or let's say you go around, like around, let's say, the middle of the vehicle, right? Through the, through the windows or whatever, like, uh, right? You could be using, like, let's say, to secure it from the front and back end, like the, the, the trunk and the. <laughs> the words are not coming to mind today, girl. But the yeah. front and back end, right? You could be using, like, let's say, Prusik knot, right? A Prusik knot, so it stays in that sp in the center. Yeah. So you can apply tension, right, on both, right, and you secure it. Use both ends of the Prusik knot to secure it to, let's say, something. For example, right. That way, it's more likely to stay on, right? I think that makes sense, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I would consider that. 
I mean, a lot of people use bungee cables nowadays, but but if you're using actual line, paracord, rope, or whatever, right? Sometimes I keep that in mind, right? Yeah. You know? Because, for example, if you if you had that center line going around the windows, right? And you secure that down, let's just say you use two, right? Yeah. For example, right? But that perpendicular amount of uh, line that you want going, you know, from the back end to the front, right? You want that staying in the center. Because if it slides, the mattress, so let's say a mattress might slide out and you don't want that happening, right? You want it so it's, it's locked in that position, right? Where it's centered in on the top of the vehicle, let's say a van or whatever, right? <laughs> I've seen that happen, right? We've seen pictures like that or video or see people actually do that, right? And it does happen, right? Not everyone has a truck or whatever, and I've seen that, right? So I was just thinking, you know, securing it so it doesn't move, shift the weight. Like the mattress didn't, sh you don't want that shifting to one side or the other because it'll slide out, right? And so that's why I was thinking maybe a Prusik knot. So since it's under tension, the Prusik knot's not a slide, right? Because it's under tension. Yeah. As everyone's aware, right? Prusik knots, as long as it's under tension, it's not a slide. Once there's no tension, it easily slides because it's held under the loops that go around, the friction of the loops going around, right? You know, maybe for something like that, maybe instead of putting three loops around, maybe you put four or five, all right? For example, right? So, yeah. I mean, I've never actually done it like that, but if I had to, I would probably consider that. For example, right? Exactly. Yeah. Because that would be a dicey situation doing something like that if you had to. Yeah, indeed, it would be. I agree right. with you. I mean, it could be like, let's say, a piece of, you know, you don't have a truck or whatever, and you're only using a car, and you got to move something really long that doesn't fit inside. Let's say yeah. a piece of timber, uh, lumber, or something like that, or, and you don't want to cut it because you need it that long. Well, you need to secure it. And let's just say you're not going far or whatever, but you don't want to drop it <laughs> in the middle of the road when you're when you're like. Crossing a road, uh, crossing, a, you know, going for an intersection. Right? <laughs> you don't want to be embarrassed. It's like, you know, it's the last thing you want is like the load to fall off in the middle of the intersection because you know you're just gonna get honked at. Everyone's just gonna be ticked off at you, right? You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So, I already yeah, know yeah. that I tried my best to secure it. <laughs> All right, as much as possible. Hmm. I see for that, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, trucks usually have spots that you can attach or tie it in there. Stuff like that. I'm just thinking about all this stuff now. <laughs> just randomly. <laughs> yeah. Pulling up something, loads on vehicles, mattresses on top of vans now. I guess I'm going far away from the fishing or the camping aspect of it, but. Yeah, exactly. Well, like I said, it can be very, very useful. I mean, even gardening. I know how the garden was in Move Up earlier, right? It could be securing something you like on your trellis or something like that. Or something you've set up as against the birds or whatever, right? Like netting yeah. or something like that. You want to secure it down as much as possible. <laughs> wow.
Why am I not surprised that's back <laughs> on the screen? <laughs> yeah. I was wondering when you would you start using it again, by the way. Well, my, yeah, um, my back is itching. I don't I know, like I when that. my back I hate when that itching. happens in, during the winter for me. Yeah. That's annoying for me. Because usually I'm wearing a lot more clothes in our backpack on, right? So it's just like, I'm trying to, like, I don't want to take off my jackets because it's so cold or whatever, right? But I need to itch it. I'm just like, I mean, sometimes I'll actually just find a stick randomly and be like, ah. <laughs> Or somewhere like that. I just gotta yeah. get that itch. You know, yeah. In the center of your back. <laughs> it's annoying when it's itching. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's go. It's so These are okay. useful. Your back is indeed easy. they are indeed they are hey uh for how much you've been drinking i'm surprised you haven't used the restroom yet this whole time you haven't gone once this whole time well i didn't realize that because usually Plus, during have... the streams you actually go it's like uh i'm going to the bathroom uh you i'll be back in 30 seconds <laughs> usually you would say that i haven't heard that once this stream no because I'm sweating like mm, oh, my okay, that's why. It's like, it's like, I don't I don't I don't need to use the restroom. I'm just gonna sweat it out. So I no, it's so hard. So oh, yeah. well, everything I drink, uh, it just vaporized from my body, and I need to drink more. Mm, and that means yeah, I need to go less to the for bre mm. bathroom breaks. Mm, that's good. Because I'm sweating out the most of the liquid. Mm -hmm. I don't like this heat at all. A friend of mine, he had 35, plus 35 degrees Celsius, up to 40 degrees Celsius. In the sun. Remember, that's 95 that Fahrenheit, 104 Fahrenheit for you guys and gals in the U.S. So he had pretty, 95 Fahrenheit is 35 Celsius. So he had yeah. uh, in the shadow, it was 35 plus, and in the sun, it was 40. Hmm. So yeah, if he went in, he had uh, 22 degrees inside his home. So that is ridiculously hot. Ugh. Yeah, Kaylin, that is hot. I should show you guys something right here. I mean, I'm a I'll have to elaborate on what I'm talking about here. Put on the ground. Yeah. Here. Something like. Let's see. All right. So just some miscellaneous tip line. Just we'll just we have to print a ten here a little here. Actually, these are tall line hitches, but. Probably be better if you actually use um, bow lines at the end, right? Or even alpine butterfly loops, right? But I was just thinking, let's just say you had a heavy weight, right? It's kind of heavy for someone to carry alone, right? But you have two people, right? So the the weight's in the center here, but you want to keep it in the center so you know one side doesn't get too heavy, right? So one per it's equal. You spread the weight evenly between two people, right? So it's half the load. Or have to wait, right? So something like an alpine butterfly loop or whatever, I can make sure that it's exactly in the center. Let's say connect this to with a carabiner or to, let's say a bag or something like that, right? And these ends were uh, bowline. They're not, they're a tall line, but a bowline, fixed loop. That way, let's say, 
let's say it's water or whatever, right? Let's say it's 20 pounds of water or whatever, right? As an easier way to carry something like that. And let's just say, um, right, you know what I mean? So, yeah. that's something I was just thinking of, you know? And this, this is what I meant about combining the knots and the hitches together in a certain way. Could be useful, right? Like, you know what I mean? About like, so it automatically, the weight automatically stays in the center. Because you have the Alpine butterfly loop right in the center. It's not the, you know what I mean? With a, yeah. let's say, a carabiner or whatever, right? And the, and then the ends are bowline, so fix the loop so it doesn't get smaller, right? Could be useful. I mean, depends on the application, great. But that's just an example of something I might to think about. Yeah. That's why a lot of these I've been using a lot because I've actually had to do similar things. Like how I had it earlier, Ray. I actually had to. Let me kill oh, okay. Like something like this, right? I actually made one before because I had to pull something that had two handles on the side, but I had to steer it. So I did something like this and the um, arbor knots at the end, tying it at the end. And the yeah. Alpine butterfly loop was big enough that I could squeeze my hand in. And basically, yeah. I could steer it with the line. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Because it was slightly yeah, lower than my body. It was slightly lower my body than my kind of just below my waist. But, well, basically, <laughs> basically to be honest, it was actually a tricycle. And I was trying to move it. But I had to walk with yeah. it. But you know, you know, I didn't want to hunch myself the whole time walking with it, right? So that's just what I did. That way, I can still yeah. control it, the handlebars. But because the Alpine butterfly butterfly loop is in the center, I can control. I'm in right in the middle of it. So basically, yeah. I can just twist my hand just to control it. So it's just something I just came up with because I was just like. And so that's, you know, because, or else I would have had to hunch over the whole time for like 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> and that, that would have been annoying over time, right? Pain in the, pain in the back, right? Because you're hunching like over just to push it, right? Because I was bringing something over to the buddy's place. Yeah. So, so something I just applied that knowledge into a real situation. Yeah. It was nice, actually. <laughs> Right. I'm just I'm just like walking along with a, a little <laughs> bicycle behind me. <laughs> it was like, but it was a way to control the handlebars without actually, you know what I mean? So, I thought that was quite ingenious. Yeah. Say so myself. Oh, I see, Jalen. I see. Yeah, I surprised my friend. It's like, see how you brought this over? Right? right. Cause they didn't yeah. see the line because i already untied it by the time i got there right? and they're yeah. really like pushing it into the garage or whatever it's like you yeah, actually did this wasn't this annoying on your back because you had to hunch over it's like oh i didn't even have to hunch over i was standing up and walking straight <laughs> right they were so surprised right yeah so I mean, if you think about it, it could be a sled too, I guess, too. I guess, you know, you think about it, it could be a sled too. Yeah. During the winter or something like that. So the arbor knots are on each side of the sled and you have a, a fixed loop in, in right, right in the center, exactly in the center. It's like a, an Alpine butterfly knot loop. Yeah. That way you can still control it, but because you can twist your hand or body and it actually because you're right in the center you twist you twist uh to the left it's gonna turn to the yeah. right you, i mean the squid's gonna come to the uh, pull from the right side go left so something 
I thought that was kind of useful. Yeah, it is. You know, something I didn't I didn't pick that up from no video. I just applied that knowledge. You know, I've never heard anyone ever say that before in any videos or whatever. You know what I mean? Are so, you, you know, sometimes you can't, you know, watch stuff on YouTube or whatever, watch videos, read forms, or look at websites like the anime nods, but try to apply that knowledge too in there. Yeah. To the problems that you have. Because then you could be figuring out something that's just like, oh, wait a second, I can, I can do this. I can put both combine the nods or hitches together and get somewhere with it. So this is why I've been really getting more of a fan of the Alpine Butterfly Knot Flash Group. Just because I've been able to apply it. Right? Because a lot of times yeah. it's been used for like bypassing a freight part of the line, a bad part of the line, or yeah. or whatever, right? Uh, yeah. Climbers use it and stuff like that, right? But I'm like, oh, yeah. wait a second, you can actually use it for other things. Right? Yeah. Where I need to fix a loop directly right in the middle of the center, directly in the center of the line. So how far, how long do you want to go for? Top of the hour? <laughs> We're kind of running dry. Well, uh, here. Uh, well, Maybe I, I, hour. well, I think I end this um, very, very shortly. In 18 minutes, 4 oh. o'clock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Top of the hour. But yeah. What is uh, midnight? Top of the hour. Yeah. You're thinking 4 because of the time on the stream. But yeah, See, top uh, hour. The, this heat messes things up. With oh yeah, 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 yeah. Brain. Yeah. Okay, so so if you do something wrong, I'll be like, "Is it hot there again, Shadow?" <laughs> For me, uh, everything above twelve degrees Celsius is hot. <laughs> and besides, the sun and the heat. Uh, makes me down mentally down so mm. on the so bad so that is almost it go turns over to a depression almost but okay, okay. yeah and I, when it's hot and sunny I feel just I want to uh, live in a fetal, fetal position and paddling with my feet and crying blood. So I was just thinking, well, I have two questions. Do you have a topic for next week or is it that one topic you didn't do that one week? It's coming up next week. Uh, yeah, I have. For the precious metal week, one yeah. or the yeah gold, silver. gold silver. It, that's next week isn't it yeah I it is you, yeah because i remember you telling me that you postponed it till june i'm like wait a second it's almost the end of june yeah next week <laughs> yeah well i guess that'll be uh okay. interesting i was trying yeah. <laughs> to come up with something funny it sounded funnier in my head. <laughs> yeah. 29 degrees Celsius. Oh. That's, that's about 84 that's, Fahrenheit. Yeah, that is 86 Fahrenheit 80, heat for me. Yeah, 86 is 30 Celsius. Yeah. 90 is 32. 95 is 35 and so forth and so forth. Yeah, that that is really hot. That is, is what I call tropical heat. Oh, I, I saw less. that again in temperature last week. It's more seasonal or it's just slightly below seasonal. It's cloudy out. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually wearing a jacket outside. <laughs> yeah. You know. And the problem with the heat in the sun is, the, especially the heat, 
if I, I go out, I can't breathe. I can only breathe in, but not out. So, I see. so I sound like uh, when I breathe, like, well, I sound horrible, basically. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. So me and he doesn't tag along that well. Not even the sun either. I wish I could bury myself in forty meter down under well, the Well, don't say it like that. <laughs> don't let you say it like that. Well, don't say uh, it like that. Don't say it like that, Shadow. <laughs> that just doesn't well, seem right. <laughs> well, forty me like forty that. meters uh, underground. You you well. Forty meters near down in the bunker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it means. The way you said yeah. it is just like you sounded like you're taking a hole. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. And now uh, that would take for a basically yeah. forever to yeah. dig a hole forty meters yeah. down. Hey, second star. So second star. So. I feel like I got so much sunlight, so that will be enough for me for the next three millennia. Mm. Yeah, I got too much sun. It's not good for me. Yeah, I know. I'm a, my body doesn't work as other people's do. Well, you know, some people like the cold more, some people like the heat more. Every day. And then there's yeah. people that don't like both. <laughs> they, they like a nice 70, 21 Celsius. <laughs> you know? Well, the problem is my body can't adapt to the heat. Ever, mm, okay. I can't. Uh, My body can't. Yeah, you, you, you prefer coolness a little, or more, just more, not hot. Yeah, below twelve degrees Celsius would be fine. Yeah, like lukewarm, lukewarm to warm, within that range, right? Yeah, like a nice, <laughs> nice uh, average spring day or fall day, and in temperature. Yeah, I could basically fill up my bathtub with ice cold water and put ice in and stay there for two next two, three, four hours to keep me cool. But that's me. Yeah, no, my body's odd. Yeah, so is mine. So second star, is he on there, man? We always, yeah. I'd always appreciate you guys always dropping by and keeping us company. Yeah. Hear me ramble about nothing. I mean, nothing. I mean, not. I mean, fishing. Not, I mean, never. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trying not to be funny, yet I am. But now I'm just all tied up with nothing to say. Just to keep you guys in the loop. You know, like a bowline loop. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we're ending the stream soon because I think I'm, <laughs> I'm running out of I'm material. To see. I'm just continuously rambling now. <laughs> but yeah. You know, for some reason, I have that same piece of cordage in my hands, and now I'm just like randomly practicing. Yeah. Like, oh, here, here's the, here's the tumble hitch. Right away. Yeah, it's nice to have. Paracord is good to practice with. Yeah, I think so too. Then it gives you something to look at too. You can kind of know which way you're wrapping it or direction is it loop a bite 
which direction am I supposed to arrive and which way am I supposed to come back underneath or something like that, you know? Yeah, I, I, I really like uh, Paracord. It's a good dimension on it, easy to work with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's just. Yeah, exactly. It's easy to work with. I know some other cord cordages out there are, can be you know more tricky to work with, or they slide, or they yeah. slide in a little too much <laughs> at times. Yeah, um, cordage that are made of uh, polypropylene. Uh, oh yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, that, it doesn't, it doesn't is... hold. It doesn't hold the knot as well. Like even when now, I make a top line hitch on it, I it's actually too have slippery. to. It's, yeah, it slides that, out still. Yeah. Okay. I find a hard time trying to make a top line hitch in some, sometimes in those. Yeah. Or I if I do, I have to really that. cinch it down like hard, right? Really, really hard. And probably put stopper knots in there. Versus something like paracord that can, uh, can hold it even with a little stopper knot at the end. Yeah, that poly line and stuff like that. I mean, I've used it before too. And I, I mean, I think, you know, that yellow stuff or that blue stuff, for example, right? Yeah. I mean, I have a piece right here that's like nice and thin. I mean, I, you know, I'll, I'll try to put a top line hitch in here. I probably, <laughs> I mean, it's got a stopper or not. I put that. Welcome, Honeybee. Like... Good to see you. Hi, Ivy. How are you doing? Nice. Thanks for dropping by. I mean, Inverna shows up. <laughs> I'll be laughing yeah. now. I'll be like, hey, Bart, you missed out. <laughs> huh. I'm actually surprised I got the top line hitch on this. And then it's actually holding it. Holding yeah, the, the loop actually, I have used top line hitch uh, um, a couple of times, and I like that <laughs> one. That is yeah, one of my remind, favorite. Like, I, like I said, because you can yeah. adjust it so you get some tension or yeah. loosen it up. So it depends. Yeah. On. I always consider it like a, a, a poor, uh, reusable version of a zip die. Because pretty much it's just like that, right? Because you can adjust it, loosen it, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, I, I do realize now that under heavy loads, it will slide because the sheer weight of it is that heavy. But yeah, but that knot is not for heavy loads. There are yeah, it's not meant that... for yeah. You know, I've used it to like keep my bedroll together, camping and stuff like that, just to, so it holds it together. Because unlike yeah, I... an Arbor knot or a Canadian jam knot, yeah, that doesn't have any friction to it, so it can slide both ways easily, right? But that Darber or Canadian Jam, that's meant for like being pulled one way continuously. Like if you're trying to, you know, let's say, pull something out, of, <laughs> pull, pull a piece of wood towards your camp or something heavy, right? That you can't necessarily carry it. Cause, let's say a couple hundred pounds, you can't carry it, but you have to drag it, all right? Something like that. I would probably use uh, an Arbor knot for. Yeah. For example, maybe maybe even a a, a bow line, put a loop around it, and go from there. <laughs> that way, I don't have, I actually have to untie that arbor knot. <laughs> For example, yeah. Hi, honey. Yes, I, I guess I am the co-host once again, again for like how many times this month, I mean this year already. Well, technically I missed last week's show, by the way. <laughs> no one saw me last week. 
Did no, anyone mention it? Last week, did anyone mention it? It's like, where's CR? Yeah. No um, Besides I mean, Hondo, I'm very sure Hondo was like, where's CR? Yeah, exactly. He was the one. <laughs> yeah, of course. If I'm he not here, Hondo's like, where's CR? <laughs> Where is he? He's always here on Saturdays with us. Exactly. Yeah, so I missed, you know, one out of 26 <laughs> times. But I was here for the other 25 times. <laughs> I heard 25 on Saturdays. No, actually, last week I was busy last week. I had to take care of things throughout the, most of the day. I mean, I didn't even have time to drop in to listen. Because I actually had to be listening and all those other stuff. So yeah. that is why I was not in last week. So forgive me. <laughs> so if you want, we can close out early if you want. It's your show. <laughs> it's your show. I'm just, yeah. I'm just a co-pilot, co-host. Yeah. Let's follow your lead. Yeah. Yeah. For example. Yeah. Uh, I think we go for midnight. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll just I'll just ramble on for the next like ninety seconds here for a minute. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> Just randomly, I'll just say something. Yeah, rambling is nice. Oh, make sure you like, like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section on this replay. Feel free to check everyone out. Uh, uh, what else do you say? Oh, yeah. Stay safe and be ready. Uh, what else do you say? <laughs> I'm trying to remember what else you say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, oh, oh, indeed, indeed, indeed. I almost forgot that. How could I almost forget that? <laughs> well, I, that one, uh, well uh, I think it's a, not a good word to use because it says everything. Indeed. I'm still trying to figure out an acronym for that that actually works for that word. Yeah. I'm still, I still haven't thought of that. Remember, I've been thinking about that since like the beginning of the year. And I still haven't thought yeah. of it. It's really hard, actually. There's so many repeating <laughs> letters in there. Yeah, but you are a bright. Uh, well, bright I don't know. Well, I don't... Intelligent, so you figure it out. Yeah, because I'm trying to make it more make sense and all that stuff. I can use some random words, but it won't make sense for the word. Well, I guess it's almost that time. Last 30 seconds here. So I'll let you uh, say your closing statements here, as usual. And like yeah. usual, I appreciate you inviting me on. Uh, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. It's but always people. a pleasure to have you here, uh, my friend. It's always a pleasure. Yes. And when you're not here, it's empty. Last week. <laughs> yeah, that Last was week. empty. <laughs> it it felt empty when you're you were not here. So, but you were busy, and I understand that. So. Oh, I'm assuming preparing this veteran or Bob or whatever he may in the yeah. company. I didn't see any of it, by the way, so I have actually no idea who you, who who was in with you. So, anyway, Siri. Yeah. Take care, everyone, and Shadow take will say his stuff. Paper. Yeah. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Time to wrap things up. Um, and yes, Kaylin, we we'll see you on the flip side. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Thanks Cheerio. for stopping by. I appreciate every one of you. Have a nice day. And God bless.
And we... Um, Cattle Scout out. Swede is out. 